Hello, everyone. Say hi, gang. Hi. hi. So excited to be back. Looking good, everyone all around as well. Woo. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Bounce House, to episode two here of Monster Hunters Club. Look forward to uh, where this adventure continues. Uh, first off, though, we want to say hi to everyone. So uh, let's do so. Uh, Danny, I'm going to pick on you first. Say hello. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Danny B. I am playing Reggie tonight and I'm really excited to see where we go. Absolutely. All right, uh, next to you, Allegra. Hey, I'm Allegra. I'm playing AJ tonight and I'm also excited to see where this going and I can't wait to see that I'm proved right that we're fighting a vampire, which is real. <laughs> and down on the end there, Allison. I am Allison, Insight Checked on Twitch. I'm playing Lisa, the Goody Two Shoes. And I think the GM was too excited for us to take the weapons for the wrong monster. So I'm going to counter your theory there, AJ. That's a fair assessment, I will say. <laughs> Handle. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> I am Todd Moonbounds playing uh, the inventive gadgeteer, Benji. Thank you all for being here. And uh, Candace, before I turn it over to you, uh, let's do a couple other announcements and things. Of course, we have two more copies of this game to give away. We have four total. We're going to do two tonight and then two in our finale next week. So I need to turn that on. Uh, so I will get that turned on. And same as last week, exclamation point MHC in the chat. And you can be entered to win a copy of this fantastic setting. So keep an eye out for that. That'll run through the entire episode and we will draw at the end there. Of course, uh, if you'd like to support us, you can do so, of course, just by being here. Tell your friends to come hang out and watch. Uh, like the channel, uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, all that good stuff. Subscriptions, donations, and bits uh, will give us bennies. Uh, you should be able to see this week our benny count uh, below Candice there. We have 18 to the players. Amazing. And then two over to the GM. If you'd like to specify, I'm just going to, by default, I'm going to take them over to the players. But if you uh, specifically want to give one to the GM, let me know when you make that uh, subscription, donation, etc. And we'll make sure that gets added up. So, all right, Candace, say hello, and then uh, you can take it away. Hello, everybody. Candace the Magnificent here is your GM for the night. Uh, very nice to see everybody back this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so a little bit about our game. Last week, sorry, previously on Monster Hunters Club, um, <laughs> last week, the kids uh, found themselves um, trying to research what happened to a young boy, uh, a teenager named Brett, who went missing. Um, people found a body on the beach. Some young kids found a body and uh, came to our heroes to see if they could maybe do some investigation uh, since they're, you know, they're big kids and uh, big kids can save the day. Um, so, you know, everybody went down to the pier, to the amusement pier to look around. Uh, you guys met up with some uh, some clowns on the boardwalk. You uh, saw a couple of people working. You guys went into the local uh, record shop, Soundwaves, uh, to do some uh, some casing of said joint, <laughs> and uh, spoke to a clerk there who pointed you to someone named L, who uh, may or may not know the deceased. You guys went down underneath the boardwalk there as well and uh, looked for clues. Uh, you found some scratches and um, a sneaker that has Brett's name written inside. It's kind of scrawled inside a little Converse shoe. Um, and where we left off, you guys were in sound waves trying to get a little bit more information on this extremely mysterious situation. With that, let's get back into it. So you guys enter sound waves. And, um, you know, again, you'd been there earlier in the day nothing really has changed. Um, you see Elle standing behind the counter and she waves you guys behind and invites you back uh, to sit down with her. Um, and you can see her, she's kind of, you know, trying to look like she's working. Um, there's there's like an older guy with salt and pepper hair that kind of like appears at the top of the, top of the little banister, like peeking around the corner, <laughs> making sure, like looking at her like every once in a while. Um, and she kind of like, once once he disappears back into, you know, assumedly his office, um, she turns her attention to the four of you. Namely you though, AJ, you said, you said you were friends with Brett, right? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. We go way back. Brett Roland? Uh-huh. 
I haven't seen him in a few days, have you? No, I haven't. I have, uh, have my suspicions about where he might be. Where? She kind of looks at you, like, and scrutinizes you a little bit. You can see she's got, um, a very kind of sharp personality, very, um, kind of no-nonsense and blunt. You can tell she's a little upset, but she's still just eagle-eyed staring at you. Go ahead and roll me persuasion to get her to talk to you. Um, okay. I have the hindrance outsider. Okay. So I think that means that I'm at a minus two for persuasion. Okay, uh, go ahead and roll. Um, and then if if anything bad happens, since, since you're the one who kind of spoke to her first, we'll let you go. And then if you fail, the others, the others of you can try to get her to, you know, coax her into talking. Explodes. Said you had some ideas. Again? Might be. Where do you think he is? I got an 11 on persuasion with my minus two. Nice. All right. Let's go. So she she looks at you guys and um, the look on her face is kind of one of, of caution uh, rather than distrust. She, you guys are young. You're little kids. And she's like trying to kind of weigh whether or not she should be honest. And finally, she kind of looks at you, uh, AJ, and she says, yeah, well, I don't know he was your friend. I bet y'all are just asking questions, aren't you? You look like you're up to no good. Lisa looks he was... personally offended by that. Just a blip of just like, oh. <laughs> she like takes it in and she like rolls her eyes at you and is like, listen, I was his friend. I was one of his only friends. Nobody ever talked to him. Barely anybody knew him. I met him like three weeks ago. We instantly hit it off. We had a good time, but I haven't seen him. He always checks in. He always comes by, always. He hasn't been at the hot dog stand all day. I asked around and I heard about that body. I'm pretty sure it's him. There's been some sketches that look vaguely like him. I'm pretty sure it was him. What do y'all know? You, you know what happened? I don't know what happened. I've been trying to kind of pay attention. A, a friend of mine was over on the beach earlier and said that he saw a bunch of police officers kind of going up and down, combing, looking for clues, I guess. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was him. I wish I would have been there. Maybe I could have stopped it. It? I think I know what happened. Well, you have to tell the police. No, I tried to. Tell the police, tell us. I tried to. I stopped by there earlier today and I said, hey, you know, my friend is missing. And I tried to explain, you know, he lives in town right on the outskirts in the trailer park with his aunt, but they didn't care. They didn't even listen to me. They just like laughed me out of their office. I just, I really tried. It, they said I was being silly, but I heard some of them talking. Everybody on the news is saying he was drowned, but someone else said that I don't know, he, he looked like he was bit. I look over at Lisa significantly at bit. <laughs> She's just shaking her head already, just like, mm-mm, mm, -mm, mm, -mm. Like, but, like an animal? I don't know, I didn't hear much and they kind of rushed me out of there. They thought you don't, I was gonna you don't think he drowned, right? I mean, no, he was such a strong swimmer. He used to spend, you know, the weekends at the beach with his parents back when they were still alive. We used to go to the beach and hang out. He wasn't afraid of water. You said you, you wish you maybe if you had been with him, you could have stopped it. What what exactly do you think happened to him? So you guys kind of see it. She, uh, she starts to kind of fidget a little bit. And when you look down at the ground, she's got a skateboard underneath her feet, right? She's got one foot on the ground and one foot on the board and she's kind of rolling it back and forth. And you can see, you know, taking a closer look at her, you can see she's got like some scrapes and stuff that look like they're still healing, some band-aids, like a band-aid on her chin. Um, you can tell that this is a girl that doesn't really care about getting hurt like that. Um, and she kind of hesitates for a second. <sighs> you know, you just have some friends that are, they like need a little cherishing, you know, like they're not, I don't mind, you know, getting into a scrap, a bit of trouble, but he wasn't like that. He was good. Didn't. What, what what was the trouble? What, I don't what know, could like you have anything. Stopped? I mean, I 
he doesn't like sneaking into the movie theater. He of doesn't like, not. you know, stealing. He doesn't like no. any of that stuff. Well, who who does? I mean, it's kind of fun. You know, you get a thrill. Anything to get the thrill, you know, like when you got your adrenaline going and like, you know, you're, you're like ready to go and it just pumps you up, you know, like when you get excited, when you're playing sports and getting dirty. Like when you get an A on a test. Yeah, I guess, you know, for a nerd, sure. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Lisa just kind of wilts a little bit. Hmm. There's nothing wrong with being a nerd. That's just your way of getting the adrenaline. That's fine. No, there's nothing wrong. I'm not saying there's anything wrong. That's, that's kind of how Brett was, honestly. He was just poor, but you know, he liked to read and stuff. We used to go to the library sometimes. When was the last time you saw him? Well, we were supposed to hang out today. Yesterday, uh, we talked, came by my house, uh, said he was going to work, and that was it. There's gotta be a motive. That's how detectives do it. Motives. Vampires don't have motives. They just bite people for blood. Well, okay. It kind of sounds like a motive, AJ. That's true. Who Are you likes... guys saying this in front of her? Yes. Okay. I think Lisa would finish with, do you know anyone who likes blood? Like just to kind of humor AJ. And also who didn't like Brett. And you see her, her eyes get really big. And she like starts looking around kind of nervously and she ducks behind the corner, like behind the counter and gets kind of close to you guys. Did you just say a vampire? I do. Uh, yeah. Yes. He got mm. bit. So I'm not the only one who thinks there's something weird going on in this town. Thank you. <sighs> Sense. Wait. Mm -hmm. He said he came to the pier yesterday. Did he make it to work at all? Yesterday? Yeah, I think so. I mean, part. so work yeah. him, and then that that's the last time everyone saw him. I mean, that's what he likes to do. You know, usually if we both work a night shift, we'll get off and, you know, we'll head down to the beach and um, you see she like blushes like really, really brightly. Her cheeks just like light up and she's like, we just, you know, we, we like throw stones and is you're that watch, getting stoned? We watch like the we sun. Were getting, we were doing. We were getting stoned yesterday. Yeah. Earlier today. Yeah, we were weird. not. We were not. They were not. They sure were not. <clears throat> they weren't. Okay. I was gonna say, what kind of kids are you? Nope. We're good kids. Sure. Not for getting stoned. Nope. I threw rocks. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Ah. Uh, anyway, we used to just you know go down after work and have some cotton candy or hot dog or popcorn or something and just like hang out and kiss ng you see she kind of crosses her arms and stands up and like looks around the and then ducks back down again not that it's any of your business we weren't dating or anything if that's what you're talking about Alan Brett sitting in a tree lisa elbows him and you can see she's just like i mean this this slow kind of reddening of her cheeks just like starts to diffuse all over her face like oh. you can see like under her tan she's just flushed i'm gonna turn to the rest of them and try to really quietly say i think we should tell her it's gonna be really sad if she if she finds out later it's gonna be sad no matter what but the adults already weren't listening to her so who That's knows true. when she's gonna find out right yeah what are y'all whispering about? Do you know something? Have you talked to anybody? Did anybody say anything? Uh, no one said anything. But we do know something. We okay. know lots of things. Yeah. What'd you find out? Well, we found a shoe with his name in it under the boardwalk. So she takes a couple steps back. You can see kind of confusion cross her face. Yeah, but like, Brett's a pretty common name, you know. Yeah. You found a shoe? What did it look like? It's a Converse, right? Yeah, it was like yeah, a chalk. Yeah, and it had, had a bunch of like duct tape on it and stuff. It, it looks, pretty you know, I, I know you said Brett wasn't too well off, so it kind of. It looked like it was being held together. Yeah. 
as you guys talk, her face just starts to fall and you see her eyes start to well up. And for a couple of minutes, like there's just silence among you guys as she just sort of takes it in and processes it. Did we see the body or wh where did we see the potential bite marks? Where did that come from? So you didn't see the bite marks. You guys were told about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, David told us. Yeah. He saw it. Okay. All right. All right. So you guys kind of see she, she takes a minute to try to kind of calm herself down. And you see, you know, the, the tears are still in her eyes. But when she looks back up at you guys, she has this like look of determination and kind of anger on her face. Something is weird though, we think. Listen, I can accept that he's gone. I can deal with that later, but no one's gonna ruin this summer. It's all I have left of him. What if somebody else goes missing? You guys need to tell me everything you know. You need to do something about it. Is it nighttime? Mm -hmm. It's nighttime. Um, do we know how many people are, do we, did we see how many people are where we were earlier? Can we just show her where we found things? So she's working, so I don't think she could go out with you guys. Okay. But I mean, just for role play sake, you can just say like, you guys download her on everything or, or whatever you might hold back. If you want to hold something back from her, um, that's up to you. But she she just wants to know like what you guys know. And you can see like, as you guys are talking, she's you know pulling, pull, like she grabs her backpack and she's like rummaging through her backpack as she's listening to you guys and nods. Is there anything you'd wanted to hold back or are you just giving her everything? No, she, she should know to be careful too, right? Yeah. So she cared about him. While we talk about the scratch marks and things. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything. Okay. Tell her about yeah. the mark on the post and all that, yeah. So when you guys talk about the scratch marks, she like looks up at you guys and is like, hold on a second. That sounds familiar. And you see her kind of going through this backpack, like really just trying to dig in there. And uh, she pulls out this like the kind of battered looking uh, library book and she opens it up to a page that's been uh, post-it noted, right? And um, inside there's like a picture of this like weird creepy ghoul with like long fingernails and big like sharp teeth. And it, it doesn't really look like a vampire per se, um, but it looks like some kind of creepy uh, just monster. And she points it and she says, y'all ever heard of a Wendigo? Oh. Has, has Lisa when ever heard of go? a Wendigo? When did it go? <laughs> go what? So <laughs> if anybody if anybody has um, either research or academics, go ahead and roll that for me. I do have research. Have if research. you would like to roll uh, a d4 unskilled, that'll just be at a negative two. Uh, I got a 10. Okay. I love it. Five single success here. Okay. Yeah, just a four for me. All right. Lisa, did you roll? I have a five. I believe it also takes the negative two into account. Okay. Yeah. It so does. then, uh, so all of you guys uh, kind of have heard like tall tales, right? Like campfire stories and things like that. And maybe your older sibling, uh, for some of you, may have told you, you know, to scare you or something like that. Um, AJ, you probably, and, and Alice as well, you guys probably would have like, you know, seen it. You know, so seeing something about that in the library or, you know what I mean? Like just, just kind of in your, in your general reading have kind of heard of this Wendigo. Um, and you know, it's just like a monster that, uh, that, that draws blood and it's real creepy. It's, it's kind of like a vampire, but like kind of more um, animalistic and less like humanoid. And uh, so she points in the book and she's like, that's what I think it is. Y'all said something about vampires? Well, heard one, about the bite and that's yeah that's one, the of logical friends, right? had, uh, one of our friends one of the other boys saw the body and and said that he had two teeth marks in his neck i don't want to be insensitive but he did not pass science class last year so just saying <laughs> she kind of like nods looking at you like with understanding like mm-hmm I don't think they teach about vampires in science class, though. They're, uh, Lisa. They don't want you to know. The grown-ups don't want you to know the real things to be afraid of. 
Grown-ups want us true. to know everything to keep us safe. Grown-ups That's what they tell us how to stay safe. Lisa, Grown-ups Lisa, lie. Lisa, she looks at you and uh, she gets like a little closer to you than the others. And she says, hey, yeah? there's nothing wrong with how you are, but AJ's right. Sometimes grown-ups lie. It's not cool. It makes you feel real bad. Like the whole world is wrong, but you know what? If you know the truth, that's all that matters. She just nods slowly, processing a semi-adult, telling her that adults lie to her, and she looks a little queasy. Well, Lisa, you always tell the truth, so you you have control over that. That's right. You can always tell the truth. I always tell the truth. You know what they call people who don't tell the truth? Bullshitters. (gasps) Don't swear. (laughs) Yeah, I said it. Bullshitters. And you know what? You can't bullshit me. Every time you say bullshit, she flinches a little bit, but she's <laughs> trying to cover it up. Well, bullshit, bullshit. Ah, Benji, no, ah, bad. AJ, okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll know, entertain it as an Elle, idea. Do you know words like like ass? And no, damn? Benji. What about fuck? Do you know that one? I lean over. Damn's a good one. Guys, sorry, Lisa, but damn is a really good one. <clears throat> Listen, you're in a record shop. You could swear. Give me, give me a crap. Just one crap. I can't. I. My mom's gonna find out. She you won't find out. Here. Won't find out. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. But it feels kind of good. Just imagine that you're you're doing your science test and they worded the question wrong. I say fiddlesticks. Oh, that's a good one. There you go, fiddlesticks. That's good. Fiddlesticks is good. That's a good one. Put it across. Listen. Well, Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks that Brett died. That's right. Fiddle fucking sticks. Ugh, sticks. I wish I wasn't working tonight. There's no backup or else I'd just ditch and work with you guys. That guy that smells like the skunk. Oh, Hector? He's a customer. He can't watch the store. Oh. Oh. Yeah, people probably don't want to shop around him anyway. As bad yeah. as he stinks. Well, yeah, yeah, you could say that. She kind of just like looks like looks to the side, like, okay, kids. <laughs> are you gonna be here by yourself all night? Like, are you the one closing the shop tonight? Yeah, I am, but we closed before Dave Dynamite Dave, so there should still be some kids around. Maybe okay. not your age. It's not safe for y'all, but you know, older kids. Okay, well, we we still don't know what it is, so be careful. Yeah. Um. You guys said you talked to a girl clown, a lady clown, about the about about. And you can see she kind of chokes on Brett's name. The body. Yeah. 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 Did you get anywhere? No. I got this. No, she- Pull out a. Grape lollipop. <laughs> Do you sell right. the balloons too? Yeah, that was from the other clown. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, she, she yeah okay, so talk, you right? tried. I don't know. When it's safe, y'all should maybe talk to other people. I'm sure somebody must have seen him. Like I oh. said, we always go out together. Even when I'm not there, he likes to go down to the pier and just kind of hang out and skip stones. It reminds me back home up north. So we talked to old Pete. Mm-hmm. Ah, old Pete. He's a good guy. I'll talk to him on my way home tonight. You see anything? Um, just Brett going down for a walk last night, and then he and didn't come it. back. I knew it! He always goes down there. He always went down there. Well, don't you go by yourself. That'll be no. dangerous for you. I won't. Does, does that book say anything about... So, so are these... Wendy goes, are they, are they just after blood? What, maybe we could like, uh, like, like lure it. Yeah, I mean, they're kind of wild. I just, why would a Wendigo, it's wild, only kill one kid? Just one? So far. Maybe. Unless maybe what the book like says secret. about them, we just know that does it just say that they're kind of like vampires but more feral is that all that says about them uh hold on a second 
and you see there's a guy standing there. Hello? Hello? In front of the cash register, and she kind of passes you guys the book absentmindedly. Yes. Hi, how can I help you? Yeah, Lisa welcome to grabs at it greedily, just like <laughs> right away goes to the index, and she's just thumbing through the index, kind of looking for all of the cross sections that could possibly connect to Wendigo, and she's like, we just have to find more keywords. So you can see, like, this book is really, really battered. There's dog ears all over it, um, places that are highlighted and stuff. Um, it just looks absolutely ancient. Some of the pages look like they're kind of loose and falling out. And when you go to the index, like half of them are gone. Like half the pages are torn out. You can see the little like jagged paper sides where <laughs> the, the pages used to be. Um, do this to a book? She kind of touches the pages tenderly. <laughs> Go ahead and um, everybody, go ahead. Anybody who has research, roll me research so you can try to find what you're looking for in this book. How much do you have to get to get a raise? A raise is anything over eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not Every four raise over raise four. four. Right. <laughs> I had a raise I'm use a Benny. Four. Okay. Ah. First Benny of the night, I believe. Single success here. Okay. I'm also going to use a Benny. Okay. I got a five both times, so I think the universe is telling me that I'm only supposed to get a five. <laughs> right. Okay. Four. Four? Yeah. Lisa, did you roll? I can roll on skill. Okay. I got Ooh. a nothing. Okay. <laughs> so the, those of you who have succeeded, um, you're paging through, and you're able to uh, kind of like like see these other pages behind the one that she has bookmarked. Um, and in front of the ones that she has bookmarked. And as you're looking through, there's some sections that look like they um, are, are in like like, an, like a different language than you're familiar with, um, like little passages that have quotes around them. So it's clear that, you know, somebody was giving a firsthand testament, uh, testimony of, of what happened. Um, but you can kind of see that uh, that there's there's like, like sections that talk about like hunting habits and, you know, whether or not they're in groups together. Um, and as you're reading it, it seems like these creatures are usually much wilder. Uh, it's not usually just like, you know, bite marks and that's it, right? It's usually like there are multiple wounds or the person's mangled in some way. Um, and you remember from what Davy said, like it, the kid had, had, a, had a bite on his neck and was otherwise normal. So it, it doesn't sound like that's what it is, but at the same time, this girl seems like really sure <laughs> that, it's, that, that, it's, that it's something akin to a Wendigo. What's the title of the book? The title of the book is uh, Supernatural and the Occult. You can see like the name of the person who wrote it. It looks like it's been kind of scrubbed off. It's a hardbound book, but again, it's very kind of rough and, and mangled looking. Maybe if it's saying what kind of hunter that this is, maybe we can go to our library and look up supernatural things that maybe hunt like this, but if this was a Wendigo, would we have been more hurt? I That's think- to phrase that, but you know what I mean. I think that if it is one of these other things that's not a vampire, or even if it is a vampire, they're just trying to make an army of them. Because why would you bite it just once if you're not trying to just like inject it with something? That's true. It could have been something that was poisonous. And maybe he just venomous? wasn't venomous. No, it'd be venomous because poisonous yeah. is the other way. Yeah. If it was a Wendigo, it's still not a vampire. But Close. have we thought maybe it's just a mean kid that took it too far? You know how like kids fight after school sometimes? Like what if they just got in a fight? What if it was just normal stuff? I mean, I, um, I don't want to mention the baby's name, but we, when they told us, they didn't mention like bruising or anything. They just said about the bite. So if it was a fight, wouldn't we have seen something? Wouldn't they have seen something? Maybe we need to talk to more people. I mean, no offense to Davey, but he didn't pass science class and he's not that smart. I, know, I mean, he's eight. Science is 
hard when you're eight. Science is hard. It wasn't that hard. Well, we're, we can't all be geniuses, Benji. I'm not a genius, but... Hey, Benji. Hey guys. Do, you, do you think you could, like, invent something that could help us with finding more clues? Possibly. Um, what are we... What do you think we're after? I think we need to go... As Elle said, I think we need to go talk to more people. Maybe it's Ant. Right. We talk to the people at the taco... The taco is not the word I want. Hot, Hot dog. dog? Hot dog stand, <laughs> yeah. We haven't talked to anyone there yet. We've just talked to the creepy clowns. And Pete. Someone had to have seen something. I can't imagine that... This, whatever it was, was that quiet. Maybe so as just... you guys are kind of like turning this over in your minds um, and, and chatting with each other, she kind of finishes up her transaction and, and pops a squat down next to you guys on her board. So, what do you think? You think I'm right? You think it's a Wendigo? Maybe. We don't know. Could We're be. Open to but... possibilities. Could be. I'm a little convinced that it's possible, but I'm not certain. I mean, I know it, it, it's it's not logical. It doesn't it doesn't really make sense. I mean, I haven't believed in monsters since I was, well, I don't know, eight, nine. But now I'm 16, about to be 17. And I know there must be monsters out there. There have to be. Somebody had to have done this to him. I gotta get back to work, you guys, but let me know what you find out. I'll be here tomorrow morning working again, so if you need me, come by, okay? I'm pulling okay. a double. Okay. Will do. And stay we'll safe, you. all right? I'm you too. I'm gonna slap one of the stakes down on her, uh, on her board, just in case. She picks it up vampire, and looks at it. It'll kill him, and if it's not, it's still a pointy piece of wood that won't feel good. She looks at it and like looks at you and you can see her kind of test the tip with her <laughs> finger. Like she kind of rubs her fingers together. This is great. Thank you. Wow. You taught me well. You guys are, you guys are cool. Lisa wow. looks astounded that someone Just, said that about her. Judge Lisa, you hear that? You're cool. I'm cool. Just don't, don't, you know, and you see she kind of swallows really hard and her eyes start to well up again. She's like, don't die, okay? You too. I can't die. I have to be home before my mom finds out that I'm not really out of sleepover. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's important. Don't get caught. We won't she get caught. She turns back to her work and you can see she's kind of trying to like, you know, file some some albums in a crate. And every couple of minutes, she kind of takes like this oversized jacket sleeve that she's wearing and kind of scrubs at her face and keeps going and scrubs at her face. And you can tell she's really trying to hide that she's crying, but she's just, she's real sad and beat up. And I try to steal the book that she showed us. Do you have thievery? I do. Ooh, okay. I have plus two to my alertness because mm -hmm. I'm always trying to find people doing bad things. Can I okay. try to see this? Yeah, you can try to see it. Um, if you weren't Lisa, I would suggest that you could try to uh, to help and assist, <laughs> do support. I have that's not. Can I assist? You sure can assist. <laughs> so to assist in Savage Worlds, you're gonna roll like normal. Uh -huh. um, AJ, give me a second before you announce what you've gotten. Okay. Um, so you go ahead and roll to assist. So roll your thievery. <laughs> and um, you're going to tell me what you get. And if you get a raise, she'll get plus two. And if you get no raise, then they'll get plus one. We still have an overabundance of bennies. Can I use one? Absolutely. As long as you didn't critical fail. I did not, but who boy yeah. was it close? <laughs> I also used a benny. So. Okay. I got a four. Four? Okay. So then AJ, uh, you have plus one. Uh, then I got role. 11 in total. 11? Woo! Yeah. AJ's on fire tonight, guys. It's the only game I roll well in. Every other game I play, it's absolute trash. <laughs> she uh, got she... seven on, on the notice. 
notice? Okay, so you definitely see all of this going down. I imagine, Lisa, you're probably the first one out. So you're like kind of lingering in the doorway and you look back over to see like what's taken everybody so long and you absolutely see AJ. And AJ, t why don't you narrate how this happens? What do you do? She's up there, um, uh, Ella's up there, you know, you can see her doing the stacks and stuff and she's like, she's kind of distracted. Yeah, I don't think we ever handed it back to her per se. I think we just like set it near her. Mm -hmm. So I think AJ, while they're all standing up, is gonna untie one of their shoes and then stand up. Oh, my shoe's untied. Maybe not like that, obviously, but then kneel down facing away from her and kind of like shielding the book with their body. Mm -hmm. And as they tie their shoe, they're just gonna like slip it into the bib of their overalls. Okay. And, and walk out like this. Yeah, so she, she does not notice at all. As a matter of fact, all of you guys notice, she doesn't really look up toward you guys. Um, she seems really focused on her task. Um, and when she kind of lifts her head to kind of survey the store, you can see like she's got, it's, it's streaked with tears. Um, she kind of keeps going back to her task and, and looking up. Um, and as you guys exit, you're home free with that book. Uh, yes. That's definitely now in your possession. Um, you guys kind of spill out onto the uh, the pier there. And you notice that since you've been in there, you guys were in there for, you know, maybe like half hour to an hour talking to her between, you know, her helping customers and things like that and researching the book. And um, you guys can see it's now after 9 p.m. on the pier. Uh, I don't think any of you have really been out that late. Maybe Reggie, you've been out with like, you know, your older brother, you know, time to time. Um, Benji, you're, you're usually at home tinkering and things like that. You guys can see it is a very different scene at night. Gone are the moms and the strollers and the dads with like kids on their shoulders and, you know, like people, you know, dining out and all that stuff. All of those like kind, sweet faces have been replaced by a bevy of teenagers between the ages of like 15 and 20, you know? Um, you guys also see there's a lot more adults that are childless here. You guys can kind of see some people getting a little rowdy as well. Um, very unsavory types. Uh, you see some kids in like leather jackets with like chains all over them and stuff and spikes. Um, and they're all kind of like hanging out together, looking around, uh, kind of looking unsavory. Um, you guys have all heard that the pier gets a little iffy after hours, but this is kind of more than you expected. Uh, the smell of that, that, that fragrance, that like smoke that you guys smelled in the record shop is everywhere that skunk, and like the yeah. yep skunk everywhere and then also kind of a um you guys would know this smell because back then we still had smoking indoors lots and lots of cigarette smoke um big plumes of it are coming kind of wafting out of the roost um which is the local uh bar next to the ghost ship uh you can see some even coming from dynamite daves um people have cigarettes all over the place um and it's just generally far seedier than you guys have ever really seen it before. It's a Friday night, so people are really jazzed to be out. This is awesome. I would I would like to think that I have been here with my older brother, so I've been, I'm used to this. Can I make a look, look around to see if there's anybody who doesn't look like they should be here? Yeah, roll me notice, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where did she go? <laughs> I'm very nervous. Man, right El, El was right. We really are cool. We're hanging out with all the cool kids now. Yeah, all the grown ups. You don't look like grown ups. Yes, I'm going to use one of my binnies. I would okay. like. To. Uh, I'm going to loop around to the other side of Lisa so she's like baby penguin in the middle of all of us. <laughs> I think Lisa was intending to like just kind of give you like a, a dagger stare, AJ, because she saw you steal the book. But she's so overwhelmed by all the people in chains and leather and like all the teenagers that she just completely forgets to be mad at you. Got <laughs> a five. Five. Okay. Yeah. So um, you're looking around, trying to kind of survey like who looks like they should be there, who doesn't, um, and you can see there's there's a, a real bored ginger kid at the hot dog stand like reading a comic book not paying attention um you can see uh the the two clowns are still there um except now they're they're kind of like like doing like smaller movements not as exuberant um there's still a couple of families meandering around but with older kids like your age um you guys see um 
you see, you know, uh, the the juggler is there. He's doing cool tricks. He's doing like flame, you know, like flame breathing kind of tricks as well, like fire breathing. Um, and like all the entertainment has kind of gotten leveled up a little bit. Um, nobody really looks like they don't belong there. Um, everybody looks like they're doing something, right? Like if they're chilling on a bench, then they're, you know, making out or they're smoking a cigarette or, you know, everybody looks like they're trying to kind of party and have a good time, except the people that are working there, anywhere from indifferent to cautious. Should we go get a hot dog? Sure. Not a bad idea. Brought my allowance. I'm kind of getting hungry. <laughs> I don't want to run into my older brother because he's old enough to be out here and I don't want to get caught. Mm hmm. So you guys head over to the hot dog stand. Um, it is uh, right across from um, from the roost, right? So you guys can see like all the craziness going on in that bar. Um, and as you as you approach the hot dog stand, the kid just doesn't look up. Like he looks like he's probably late teens, early twenties. Um, and he's like, he's just like face deep uh, in a comic book. Are you still open? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're still open. Can we get four hot dogs, please? Uh, and he holds up a finger and it's like, uh, yes. And then like, you can see he closes the, the comic but he puts one of the little like hot dog like paper holders in between, like wedges it in between, and um, puts put, take the takes the gloves off that he's using, and puts a new set of gloves on, what, and uh, starts serving you guys up your hot dogs. What, what comic, comic is he reading? Is <laughs> Roll me <laughs> notice, please. Ooh, double eights. Okay. For a ten total, single raise here. Okay. Five. Five, okay. I got double ones. Oh! <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't think Lisa engages with the comic book. She doesn't consider it literature. Something to read. Okay. So, um, AJ, you're the one who got double ones. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna resolve that first. You're I'm trying to like ball. peer over to like take a look at whatever it is that he's trying to read. And as you do that, you like lean a little too far and you press really hard on the cart and it shakes it and the kid's comic falls into the hot dog water. No. Before it does that though, the rest of you are able to see, it looks like it's some kind of like weird, like tales from the crypt or something like that. Like it has a real creepy guy on the front of it um, that looks kind of like a weird zombie skeleton thing. And it's got like long hair and, um, it's like sitting by a fire, like, and has like its eye open really big and with this really creepy expression on its face. As soon as the book hits the water, Lisa's like, that violates a health code. Kid goes, oh shit. Oh, damn it. And you see him kind of like looking around and finally he finds uh, some tongs and he like picks it out of the water and he takes it out and you can see the ink is just like running down the cover. It is completely saturated and ruined, just like foobar. And he like sets it down on some paper towels and just like looks at it for a second. Yeah, that was first edition. I'm so sorry. Oh, now it's deep fried edition. Oh, you know normally I'd laugh at that, but goddamn. Reggie hey. feels the pain. Reggie feels the pain because her brother also has comic books and just knows that hurt. <laughs> I'm so he, sorry. He so shakes so his sorry. head. He looks at you guys and it's like, yeah, it's, it's all right. Y'all are kids. Uh, I got a little brother, Colton. He fucks all my stuff up all the time. I just thought reading this outside of the fucking trailer, maybe I would have a chance at like, you know, not getting my stuff ruined, but you know, whatever. He's a little younger than y'all. So I, I, I know you probably didn't mean it. I've never seen, never seen that comic book. Oh no, you ain't never seen good. that? Oh, wow. it's so good. Oh, it's terrifying. I like reading it when I'm on night shift. It makes everything real spooky. We're, uh... You like being scared? Of course. Yeah, I'm a horror hound. Yeah. Like listen, I like I like listening to uh, Death Metal, too. Really big into that. You know, Ozzy you Osbourne? Yeah. Yeah. What are, you, what are your favorite monsters? Oh, 
That's hard, man. I like to watch all the old black and whites. Uh, I don't know. I like uh, I like the Wolf Man. Uh, he's real cool. Uh, I, I like the, the Invisible Man's kind of lame. Uh, I, they, I figure you could do better. Man, but, if you could uh, be invisible, no, Think about all the people that you could watch, like getting into trouble, and you can help them get out of trouble. He looks over at Lisa and goes, "No, squirt. I'm, I'm not a rat." Me no. either. Nosferat, what's that? Nosferatu. He's Bless a vampire. You. He's real scary. He's got like long, Itchy. skinny fingers and pointy ears and like creepy, like big shark front teeth that are real long. Squirt. Oh, he's so gross. Scrat? Like, like claws? Yeah, he's got claws. Teeth? Yeah, like real long teeth. Does he hang out under piers? A pier? Ah, no, I mean, he's got a crib. That's that's not really a pier. It's like a like a grave kind of thing, and you know, sneaks around and bites ladies, and you know, makes them scream. It's wild. Oops. Uh, I've heard of a vampire before, but I've never heard of a Nosferatu. Is that a certain kind of vampire? Ah, it's just a movie vampire, you know. It ain't no like you know Dracula or nothing. Okay, and that's real. Oh, I don't know, man. I, I mean, I guess anything's possible. And you see him kind of start thinking, and uh, he, he, like, goes to kind of, like, like reach behind his ear. And you guys see there's, like, a little a little uh, cigarette behind his ear that looks, like, hand-rolled. And as he touches it, he, like, looks over at you, Lisa. And he, like, thinks about it and puts his hand down. He's like, yeah, you know, anything's possible. Anything Lisa, in the world. Lisa looks relieved that she doesn't have to tell him that smoking's bad for him. Like, it's it's probably the thing she says the most, so she's just relieved she doesn't have to say it again. <laughs> Why, y'all into that? We're learning more about monsters, so this is a new one. It's been you an look too young to be watching night. that, though. Yeah, too young. Yeah, have you ever heard of a... Ever heard of a w- w- Wendigo? Wendigo? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're like... They like tear you apart, man. Limb from limb, drink your blood. You think those are real? I mean, people say they haven't seen them, but you know. So it would be weird if they didn't tear you apart. Yeah. I mean, I think so. I, I don't want to freak y'all out. No, oh, we're tough. Oh, oh, I have a question for you. Um, yeah. You like monsters, and you like—you said you're a horror hound. Do you know of anything that's not a vampire that bites people? Oh, man, that could be anything. Could be... I don't know. Could be uh, chupacabra. Could be uh, a throat sucker. Could be uh, a xenomorph. Uh, I mean, you're all talking about, like... Makeup stuff, right? Made up stuff, nonsense, make believe. Yeah, make believe. Maybe. Could be. I mean, probably. Xenomorph might do it. I'm a big fan of that. Aliens. That's good. Those aliens. Oh man, it's real creepy. They're up Can in space. we trade you a secret for our hot dogs? A secret. Yeah. What's it about? You're a big whore hound. I think uh, we might have something you'd be interested in. I don't know, man. I, I don't have a lot of money. a real monster. Go ahead and roll me persuasion. You can see this kid is uh, is kind of rough looking. He's, uh, he's, he's fair skinned. He's got a, a swath of freckles across his face um, and like a, like a big mullet kind of situation going on and his hair is kind of like wavy it's not curly um and it's bright bright red like a real like bright ginger red color all right so i uh spent a benny uh aced on the next roll for an 11 so hit and a raise okay so he kind of looks down at like his, his shirt's got kind of holes in it and stuff when you guys walked up it kind of just looked like it was his aesthetic you know but now that you're really taking a look at him it's clear he's just done got a lot of money um, and he's like, I don't know, man. This is like, ah, uh, this is my second day on the job, man. I, I got more hours now because like somebody just walked off the job and just didn't show up for a shift the other night. I just, ah, uh, 
I can't resist, man. All right, fine, fine, fine. Take the hot dogs. And he just kind of shoves them in everybody's hand. What do you got? We think there's a real monster around here. Real monster? Monsters ain't real? That's what I said. She looks pointedly at AJ. That's what I said. And the most not... logical explanation is that there is a monster. Either that person you said who didn't just who just walked off the job. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you don't I know never what met happened him. To them? Uh, they I think his off. name's uh, Bruce. Uh, Brett. Bri Brian. Brett. 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 Yeah. yeah, that's him. Yeah, what? He what about? Walked off what about him? Here, but he didn't walk off the job on purpose by choice. Oh shit! Is he the kid that's missing? The one that the body? We think yeah. so. Yeah. Oh, damn. I mean, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm glad for the money, but I'm sorry to hear that. Friend of yours? AJ. Good friends with AJ. Technically, yes. Oh, man. I'm sorry, guys. Thank you. Oh, what's the secret, though? Just that he's the one murdered? Know that a vampire did it. How? Yeah. Okay. Right, Fucking casualness. What? What'd you say? It might have been a monster. Might have been a monster. I thought. I thought he was drowned. You guys are acting like he was like straight up killed. Well, we don't think he drowned. One of our some somebody told us they saw the body, and he had two puncture holes in his neck. It's Puncture a, a semi-reliable source. Is this why y'all ask me about Nosferatu? Yeah. Maybe. Hey, research. Yeah, really? Listen, he goes by Count Orloff. That that can't be him, man. It's just it's just a movie, but movies. Oh, God. I mean, he, any story is kind of based on real things. Yeah. Somewhere. You got a point, man. I mean, I guess if Bigfoot exists, he's got to exist, right? What you call it, a Wendigo, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I read about him. Up and that's that's what's weird is if Wendigos are, you know, gonna really thrash you about. Brett wasn't like that. Look. You said this Nosferatu. He he lives in in the crypts. Yeah, usually. Like, like that weird weird guy on your on your comic. Yeah, kinda. I mean, he's not an Osferatu. I think he's just, you know, dead alive. But yeah, usually, usually in like a crypt, they gotta hide from the sun. You know, the sun will burn them up. Yeah, we do know that part. Hey, um, uh, is there is there a? I guess we might know. Is is there like cemetery or something nearby that we would know of? So you guys know there is a cemetery. Um, it's at the other end of town, kind of on the way out, like on the outskirts where there's more land and farms and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, it's a it's a it's a fairly good distance from where you are. You could definitely bike it, but it's not close. Mm -hmm. Um, Mr. Hot Dog Stand Man. Um, oh, you can you can call me Gatlin. How, how are you? Uh, Gat sorry, I sh should introduce myself. I'm giving you free food. I should know who you are. Who I appreciate it. Um, I can I can pay for the food. I don't want you to get in trouble if it's only your second day on the job. I know that that you might get in trouble for that. So here's my allowance. And she just kind of like reaches into her pocket, pulls out, I don't know, probably a bunch of like sticks of gum and like extra pens just because she never wants to be without a pen and they all fall out of her pocket. And she hands over just a big handful of coins to him. She, so, so you, you put that in his hand um, and, and he's like looking at it and he looks up at you and he's like, I can't take your money. It's all right. I made, I made an agreement. Uh, my big brother comes down here, sees me taking money from kids. He's going to freak out, man. He's the one who helped me get the job. Uh, just don't worry about it. These drunks don't know. I'll charge them each dollar a hot dog. And hands you back your money. Lisa doesn't know how to process that second part. So she just takes the money back in her hand, closes her fingers around it, nods. Okay. Thank you for the hot dogs. My name yeah, is Benji, you... by the way. Nice to meet you, Benji. You remind me of my, my little brother, Colton. He's like maybe two, two, three years younger than you. I just, y'all, y'all better get out of here, man. I, I don't feel right being here myself, but I got to bring home some cash. So we need, we need to find out what's it's going late. on though. 
Wait, did we you have... mention... Sorry. Go ahead, Reggie, sorry. So I, I just thought you mentioned something. You said you didn't feel good out here, and I just remembered that you said something about living in a trailer. Did you say that? Yeah, yeah, I live around at the trailer park with my brothers and... Is that on, like, the outskirts of town? Yeah. Would we know that that's... Is that the same area where Brett would have lived? Yeah. Brett lives in that same trailer park. Okay. I won't, I don't want to, I won't mention anything in front of them, but I will say something when we leave about that. Okay. So he looks at you guys and is like, hey, uh, maybe it's a good thing y'all destroyed that comic. Now I'm going to be alert, looking around, making sure nothing crazy is going on. Uh, you guys stay safe, all right? Enjoy your food. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to be together, so we'll, we'll take care of each other. Mm-hmm. As you guys walk away, you see he kind of straightens up and starts like looking around and everything. His eyes are extra wide. And he's very alert, waving people down. And you can see like two drunk people kind of stumble over and he smiles at him and starts to help them with their order. Lisa is just counting the coins in her hand and she's just like, well, why didn't he let me pay for the hot dog? Good for services. It doesn't make any sense. She puts the change back in her pocket. <laughs> Ooh, who, uh, who else should we talk to? I mean, we've talked to the clowns. I don't think I want to talk to them again. Ooh. Although, did I think it was Lisa who saw that the first clown, I think, knew something more than she was letting on. Is that right? Do you guys remember that when we did like I a... something was up with the lady clown? I don't. Yeah. She got uncomfortable when I talked about dead kids. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. For some reason. <laughs> Um, as we're walking, deciding who we're going to talk to, I bring up that um, Elle mentioned that Brett lived on the outskirts of town, and that kid is also from the outskirts of town. This is just maybe something we can check out in the daytime, just see if there's anything where he lived. Maybe you need to get some clues out there. You think this this Nasferatu is is targeting people from the trailer park? I don't know, but that's just. At this point, we don't really know much, but that's two people that kind of mentioned the same place. So it couldn't hurt, you know? Especially if, I don't know if it's the same direction as the crypt, but if we're gonna go across town, we might as well just do everything on one side. Yeah, I was gonna ask if the cemetery is over by the trailer park too. Mm-hmm, okay. yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we should go over there during the day since they can't come out during the day. So if we have to go fight him, he's stuck in there and we can go anywhere we want. Yeah, and the cemetery is closed at night, so that makes sense to me too. I don't I don't think we should stay here much longer. Maybe I know we should ask to... him much, but I feel like we're kind of pushing it. If it doesn't come out at night though, I mean, maybe he's just locked away. Like cemeteries are just, you know, like tombstones and things. So we're not going to be able to get in anywhere, are we? Well, a crypt is a little bit different. My yeah. mom wouldn't like if I go to a crypt on a sleepover. I don't think I want to go to a crypt at all, honestly, but... Oh, come on. Crypt, That's how we're go, gonna get rid of it. We can go into crypts some places. You can, like, go... They open a door. They're more than just a gravestone. As we you need guys are help. Home. Sorry, go ahead. I was just say, we just need to help. We need to help figure out what this is. Mm-hmm. As you guys are all kind of talking amongst yourselves, um, the, the the action kind of around you gets louder and louder and louder progressively. Um, and you see people just kind of starting to pour in. Um, I, I want to say the crowd's not, not quite doubled yet, but it's getting there. Um, there's tons of people. You can see a bunch of uh, teenagers hand in hand pairing off, going down to onto the boardwalk and um, down onto the beach. Um, people, you know, going in and out of Dynamite Dave's, coming out for a cigarette, going back in. Um, people are kind of just living their lives. Uh, you can see in front of, um, right in front of Sound Waves, there's that same clown, the female clown. And then in front of the amusement pier, um, on the right side, closer to the beach, you see a guy on a uni unicycle, that same guy that was kind of breathing fire earlier. He's doing like new tricks now. And you can see like a crowd of people kind of clapping and a hat on the ground where people are throwing money. Um, he's in like a, like a, like a one piece kind of suit, like an old, an old timey carnival uniform uh, with stripes all over it. Um, and then the, the male clown is there, um, as well. And he has, uh, his balloon animals that he's doing. Um, but he's making like couples, like holding hands and stuff. And 
Um, you see somebody kind of slide him some money and he makes a balloon that looks like, it looks like a sword, but like it also looks like a little dirty. Um, like maybe something you're not supposed to look at and like all the all the kids that he hands it to, they all like, you know, burst into like huge fits of laughter crying. And, you know, they're walking away, poking each other with their, you know, their phallic swords um, being real cheesy and garbage. <laughs> Um, I want to look at Lisa and say, it's it's super getting really busy. Um, we should hold hands so we don't get lost, and I want to make sure you're not scared. Visibly, Reggie is freaking out. <laughs> Do I... Would Lisa know why Reggie's freaking out? Because um, I've seen you hang out with Caleb before, and you in, in Lisa's eyes, you seem really cool. Um, it's just the, the... I think it's the fact that we're still out late at night, and vampire, we know. We don't know this other thing, and that is making her uh, uncomfortable. She's also yeah. scared of something else, but she doesn't. You don't know about that. Okay. But yes, yeah, she's just she's very nervous now. Yeah, I, I think off. Lisa would probably interpret that as Reggie pitying her because it's incomprehensible to Lisa that Reggie would actually be scared, and so she says, "Yeah, no, sure, of course," and she'll grab your hand and. Um, Kind of just keep an eye out like in case she can offer some sort of protection although she's absolutely terrified as well <laughs> the, the hand contact you will see reggie calm down because she's with her best friend but it's she's still faces kind of stone very scared right now mm -hmm. benji is the complete opposite just out chest out just mm -hmm. marching in front of the group just you know enjoying things on the hunt for for whatever where we're going and just enjoying this and and yeah, curious and, and inquisitive, I'll, I'll get out. AJ so is similar, um, but also kind of trying to keep an eagle eye out for any of our siblings. Wait, where, so what are we doing? We... Is there anybody else we need to talk to? We probably should get, talk to maybe one or two more people before we actually have a sleepover. I think we need to talk to an adult. So far, we've only talked to like semi-adults. And I think an adult could really shed a lot of light into the situation. But like Elle said, the adults don't believe in that stuff. An adult's gonna lie to us because they think we're not old enough to hear whatever it is they want to say. And Lisa, we might get in trouble if we talk to an adult. We need to avoid them right now. <laughs> well, you're right. We'll definitely tell all of our parents that we're not having this over. We're trying to not have that happen. Lisa looks crestfallen at the fact that maybe she needs to avoid adults for the rest of the night. She hadn't considered that. Okay. Well, maybe we'll talk to another teenager and and see if they saw anything and not talk to adults at all. As you guys are, uh, are kind of like sifting through the crowd trying to figure out where to go, everybody roll me stealth. <laughs> Ooh. I'm gonna Benny that. Same. Oh, I'm gonna Benny go. that. Okay. Okay, got a success. All right. What did everybody else get? I got a nine. Nine, cool, okay. Lisa Five. got an, an 11. 11, okay. AJ? Five. Five, all right. So you guys got like, at the same time, all of you guys get kind of like a weird feeling. Lisa, you not so much. You're more reacting to your friend's kind of vibe shift. But the, the other three of you, like something just tells you that you need to just like move quickly to a new area and like maybe scoot behind like some benches or something. And you guys, you know, are, are kind of really careful. You get really low to the ground and you get really, really quiet and you sneak over onto the benches, like, like behind one of the benches. And you guys see, your old, your siblings. Caleb is there. He's hanging out. He's like making muscles and stuff, making people laugh and everything. Like he's standing like up on top of like a planter or whatever and jumps down, does like a cool trick in the air and everything. You can see uh, Cassie's there. She's like clapping for him and everything. Alex is looking really disinterested and kind of like people watching, like looking over, trying to like see people looking around. And they're with like some other kids, like people you guys have definitely seen them with before. Um, and then one of what well, somebody else comes up with, you know, when, one of the one of the, the the obscene balloons and like starts kind of like, you know, making light of it with the kids and stuff. And they walk right past where you guys were just standing. Like you barely, barely dodged them. 
Um, but going behind this bench, you guys kind of look up and you realize that sitting on this bench is the older lady clown. And she kind of like looks at you guys and sees that you're hiding and just like sits up straight and kind of like obstructs you guys from view. I think we need, I think we need to go. Who are y'all hiding from? No one. Oh, we're not, we're not hiding. We were just finding a place to rest. You just got really busy. That's all. Oh, you want me to move? No, 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 no. I, I can go if y'all no, 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 please stay. Please stay. Oh, please stay. I thought you weren't hiding. We're not. We're we not. are. We don't, we don't want to disturb you. No, we're yeah. hiding. What you hiding from? Anything I can help with? We're hiding from the Wendigo. Wendigo? What's that? And Nosferatu. <laughs> y'all are silly. Nosferatu. That old movie. Oh, you guys are cute. Is really she though, is she are, sitting on the bench from... looking forward as we're kind of like underneath her? And yeah, you guys are like looking forward. You guys are like behind her and she's like talking to talking to her talking to you guys like over her shoulder like this. So cute. And she's like puffed gonna... up trying to like her arms are out and you can see like her. She's wearing like that same kind of like ridiculous clown getup that kind of onesie, and it's real billowy. So she's kind of making like a little tent of her body. Oh, yeah. In front of I just guys. look over to everyone behind me. Y'all need help? You okay? I got more lollipops. We, well, why did you get all uncomfortable when I talked about dead kids earlier? She freezes. You see her head kind of go forward. And she just is like, ah, y'all still need me to Hide you or Lisa looks at ship's almost over. Lisa looks at Caleb's retreating figure and she's like, please don't move. Please don't move. Yeah, okay. Uh I'm I'm gonna keep doing this. If you want, uh AJ, you can roll me intimidation or persuasion, whichever you prefer. Neither of them are great, but I have slightly it'll be equal because I have a minus two in persuasion, but I have a I'm unskilled in intimidation, so uh, I can give thing. you a Benny if you need it. Uh, I have, because I have Lisa's one left. gritting her teeth and hoping that this woman does not move and reveal her to Caleb. I'm gonna use my last Benny on this. Okay. Ooh, there we go. Six. Okay. And which are you doing? Persuasion or intimidation? I I did persuasion. Okay. Um, so you, what do you do? You just like lean in and kind of like make I just it seem like, like it's squint. <laughs> she can, you can, you can tell that this lady, like you can see her shoulders kind of like start to kind of quiver a little bit as she's like holding them up. And you see her kind of like close one eye and just like, like look over at you guys. Yeah. I'm not, uh, not supposed to talk about that. Uh, especially not with y'all. You, you, Honk, honk! <laughs> You're uh... We know more than you do. No. I don't know what you're about that dead to... kid. I'm just not supposed to talk about it. What are you scare supposed away to say? Money? Maybe, like, died in our area, kind of near the pier? Yeah? Yeah, I mean, I don't want anybody thinking it was me or nothing, and I don't know, they told me if I said anything, I'd get fired. So please, don't who, say anything, who, all right? Who told you? My boss. Freckles, don't, don't say anything, all right? He, it's is not, she another adult. See, they're just adults. They're not. They have a very complicated system of accountability. We just, you know, we, we got to make sure that we're we're closing at night with, you know, in, in the black. We got to make sure we got money. Um, He doesn't like it when we lose out on money for no reason. So I don't know. I'm just not supposed to talk about it because it was real ugly. I don't know, Freckles said to tell everybody I, I didn't see nothing, so I didn't see nothing, okay? Did you see something? Did you see something? <sighs> Jinx. Uh, fine. Yeah, I saw something. Oh my god. What'd you what? see? What? Don't tell anyone, all right? Oh my god. No, we're and not you can rats. See she's, she's stressed out. So finally, she kind of like just like spins around 
and um, and like turns on you guys, and you see like her face like looming over the bench. Ah! And you're like you're like close up with like her her face paint, and you can tell it's been a long day. It's all crinkled around here, and That's you can see her skin underneath and everything. And she's got wrinkles. It's all settled yeah. into. She looks really scary. Um, <laughs> she's like, hey, yeah. listen, I was leaving. I was going. I saw that kid go down to the beach. I saw him. He worked over at the hot dog stand, right? Yeah, I, I tried to tell Freckles. I saw him. He, he had, uh, he had come back up and uh, gone, gone over the amusement pier. But I don't know. He, he just turned on his heel, got in there. Freckles said something to him. He went down to the beach. Then that, that, that's that's all I know. I left after that. But yeah, I saw I saw him. He was he was talking to him, and you know whatever. That was it wasn't unusual though. That kid used to come in for rides and stuff. That little girl over at Sound Waves to ride the Ferris wheel and all that. You know. Nothing weird, I didn't think. I didn't say anything, because that's normal, right? Did you just say that he went down, but he came back? Yeah, like he went down there and uh, just, you know, like hung out for a little while and I wrapped up my shift and then I saw him come in and he was talking to Freckles and I uh, went to the roost to get a drink and you know, I watched him as he went back down onto the beach. Looked like he was turned away or something. What? Um. Is Freckles one of the clowns on the pier? Yeah, he's the boss. He works on over a, a, over there. She kind of points across, and uh, you guys, when you guys follow her finger, you can see across the way. There's, um, you know, the full the full amusement pier is open. Lights and sounds are going. And everything. There's, you know, people everywhere. Um, there's a big fun house. No. Oh, right there. Of course. And uh, <laughs> it it the 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 fun house kind of has this um, like a big clown face oh, as the opening. Yep. It's got uh, kind of like tufts of hair sticking out of it, fun houses and beautiful, you know, lights above it that are, you know, kind of clicking off and on, sparkling a little bit. Um, she's like, over there, right? That's that's it. That's all I know. He So he, he went down to the beach. He came up, talked to Freckles, and then went back down to the beach? Yeah. And Freckles was the one to tell, tell you, he said, you didn't see anything, right? Well, I mean, I tried to tell him, and I, I said, hey, you know, that, that kid, he's he's missing. Like, I haven't seen him, and there was a body found, and I was just trying to explain to him, like, I hope it wasn't that boy, because he was kind of regular, and he just said, not another word. We got to make money. Nobody cares about that kid anyway. He was probably homeless. So I just shut up about it. I'm not trying to get fired season i can make so much money Thank it's not you. a big deal though kids don't worry i don't think you're i mean i want to say you're not in danger but y'all should just get it's late oh we're, we're leaving thank you yeah yeah do, do you have do you have any more lollipops i do <laughs> yeah kids I, I do and she like honks her nose and puts her clown voice back on and like stands up She's like looking around, making sure no one sees, and she like hands you like the rest of the bunch of lollipops and just like yes. tosses you all of them, and is like, "All right, kids, uh, skedaddle, all right." <laughs> Thank you. Hey guys. Thanks. You see her start waving other people down, and like a group of teenagers walk by, and they start kind of like making fun of her and you know mimicking her and stuff, and you can see she's just like tired. She's over it. I think Lisa will huddle with AJ and say. So it was Freckles. Freckles did it, not a vampire. Or Freckles is the vampire and he's hiding in the crypt of the fun house. Lisa looks unconvinced. I just want to say that looks like the opposite of fun right there. It's the full opposite of fun. It does not look like fun at all. I do agree with that assessment. AJ, go ahead and take a Benny from Lisa's help earlier. She's intending to give you one on your intimidation. Oh. Thank you. That's so sweet. Do we come back in the morning? No. Nope. Well, if Freckles isn't here in the day, I wonder if he's here in the day. Hey, uh, uh, excuse me. And I'll go back to like tug on the clowns. Like, mm -hmm. uh, outfit. It, is Freckles? <laughs> yeah. Is Freckles usually here in the day? Yeah, he's here. He's here. Uh, the mostly, mostly night shift because that's when people are here, but. Uh -huh. And you can see she's trying but, to like talk to you. But has he been here during the day? Uh, 
I've seen him here once or twice during the day, yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right, usually, thank like, you. usually in his office, you know, in the back, underneath all the rides. There's there's an office. That's where he. That's where usually where he's at. Hmm. So we don't have to go in the fun house. Well, I mean, if you want to find him, he's probably around there now. You can go at. You know, you know who knows where he is, uh, Mr. Jangles. Oh. You can go and ask him if you want. And she points over at the clown that's like miming to people. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I have a giggle over the sound, the mime being the Jangles named one. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Stop asking me questions. <laughs> Someone's going to know I talk to you. Thanks for the lollipop. Thank you. Yeah, right. Don't make me. Fun. Don't make me regret it. Let's go. Let's go. Her, her nose. Sorry about the questions and for interrupting your work day. Bye. You can see, like, when she's, like, waving you guys off, she's got this, like, oh, shit, look on her face, like, was I just swindled by some children? I think I was. And waves at you guys, like. Lisa repeats what AJ said and what she was called earlier. We're not a rat. <laughs> okay, do we go talk to him now? It's, it's late. I don't know how much later we should stay out. Our, our, we hit once. What if we don't hide good the next time? Then we're all in trouble. Yeah. If Freckles did it though, and it was at night, what if, what if he does it again? If we don't do something, what if our siblings are in danger? We're together in a group, so maybe they should. Freck was by himself. I think. I don't know. I don't know. As you Wait. guys kind of like look around, you can see where your siblings are. They're like all the way kind of across from where you guys are, kind of toward like the front of the pier. And you can see there's, um, they're like passing around like a little brown paper bag and giggling with each other. They're all the way over there and we have to go the opposite direction. Is, is Mr. Jingles in the opposite direction? Yeah, Mr. Jingles is actually kind of further into the boardwalk. He's right there at the amusement pier, which is you know the last kind of stop on that side of the strip before you get to the, the actual boardwalk and then the beach. And he's like right in front of there and you can see he's he's basically same same routine as this morning, just a little bit more in depth for the older clientele. I'm not, it's so busy right now. Are we gonna be able to talk to anybody else without anybody else hearing? I think we just lucked out. It doesn't out. seem like somebody that's gonna talk to us anyway. The, the, that clown just, yeah, he just mimed, didn't he? I think so. Maybe he could point. If we're looking for Freckles. But I mean, even even Freck, I don't think Freckles is going to talk to us. It's so. just another adult. Probably going to lie. We could see what Freckles does. I mean, I don't want to spy, but I'm really good at it. Yeah, we can just locate him. One last thing. One last thing. And then we then we have a sleepover. Yeah. For real. Of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go. You guys inch closer. So as you guys kind of approach him, you can see there's there's kind of a, a there's more of a crowd around the guy that's that's doing like the stunts and stuff, right? He's taking out his juggle his juggling equipment and he's juggling while he's riding this, you know, unicycle in like a little tight circle. And there's like a big crowd around him, but there's only like one or two people kind of passing by at this point. Um, now that he's taken out the, the, this extra element to his act, um, almost no one is next to Mr. Jingles. Like he's still doing his little mime thing and then he'll do like a frozen pose where he's just like standing there, not moving for a while. And then he'll like come back to life and do another pose and just kind of is waving people into the amusement pier. Benji, maybe you can talk to him because you guys are friends from earlier. Yeah, so, so we're asking him to point out Freckles, right? Yeah, if he's okay. in the fun house or, or maybe somewhere else. So I'll uh, I'll pull out a balloon and stretch it out and I'll blow it up, tie it off to get ready, and then walk over there and, and begin trying to like create something as I walk up to the clown. Okay. Um, do not have performance. <laughs> Success though. Okay. So I walk up and, and kind of get their attention and, and, you know, just do a simple, um, I think like the dog, the classic balloon dog mm -hmm. is, you know, they're 
maybe the legs are a little off, but you know, it still holds and and show it up and show it off to him. Look, so, look, look, I, I, I'm getting better. Like you get like a like a foot away from him, um, and he's like he's done like the powered down thing where he's just like frozen, and you get about a foot away from him, and he like comes back to life, and is like like emotes at you. <laughs> And does like jazz hands at you and shakes them out. And, like dance the balloon dog and So then he like starts clapping and everything, like as you're dancing it and everything, he's like responding to everything you're doing. So he's like clapping and does like a little dance with you and stuff with the balloon dog. Um and he gives you like two thumbs up and like a little wink. And he still has the same makeup you saw before, like the sad clown face with like, you mm. know, daisies on his cheeks here. Um, same like weird like hair kind of like shaggy on his head. And then I'll um and then I'll just, I'll just, you know, kind of come out and say, uh, we're, we're looking for, uh, it, Freckles is another clown. Do you know where Freckles is? He points at himself and like turns around. Are you, are you Freckles? And where, you see where? he produces out of his, out of his side pocket, some jingle bells and he shakes them. J jingle, jingle. Where, he like tips where's, his hat at you. Where's Freckles? You see him kind of take a step back for a second, and he's still smiling, but like the light kind of fades from behind his eyes, and he kind of looks at you. He shrugs. Do we all hear this? Mm -hmm. I think Lisa at this point would come up behind Benji for some support and say, um, oh, we, we need, we need an adult. Um, we, we were at the pier at night and we were told we need to talk to Freckles because we need an adult. We need an adult. He shrugs at you and starts making a balloon animal. Oh, I thought that would work. It works every time. She looks at Benji he, helplessly. He hands you a balloon. It's a big question mark. She holds it and just has like a metaphorical crisis looking at it. <laughs> it works every time. It's, Freckles is your boss, right? Are there uh, a lot of well, around right now? Are there a lot of people around this clown right now? So there's like a couple of people passing by and things like that. Um, but most of the people are, are a couple of feet away from him toward the beach surrounding the uh, the guy that's on the unicycle that's doing like really cool tricks. Um, he was kind of more like the sign guy, kind of like waving people in with his little like mime motions and stuff. But now that he's talking to you guys, no one's really coming up to him. Can we tell if he's like so from our child brain like is he is he hesitant because we're kids and we have no business with freckles or is he like what 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 kind of vibe do we get from him roll if me we notice can, if we can get a mime vibe check sure yeah <laughs> let me know what you get i got a six a six okay so when you're looking at him when he's talking to Benji, you see um, very well kind of the shift in his demeanor, right? At first he looks really friendly and happy. He's really happy to see him. And then he gets, he goes to this place a little, a little more so this, when you asked him, gets to this, this face of like distrust or, you know, kind of hesitation. He, he doesn't look like he wants to talk to you. Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> Please have a Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. Oops, I spent it. Well, if we find Freckles, we'll tell him you're not very helpful. Because we really need to find him. You see, he just waves you. He like waves you off and is like, and then starts making a balloon. I think Lisa will call a huddle of all the kids. How do we convince a mime? I don't think we convince him. I don't, he can't, also, he's probably not supposed to talk to us. He's in the mind. I think, like, do we just go to the fun house? I think we Was have it? to go to the, oh, God. Uh, oh, well, they, they said we can just go to the office under the rides, right? We don't have to go in the fun house. Tomorrow, well, though. He'll be there tomorrow. Find it. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was tomorrow. Light out? I'm, 
Does anyone have a skill, perhaps, that could assist you in this situation? Or, uh, or like persuasion, you're saying? Or intimidation, either or. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, persuasion, but it's not, like, great. I think Lisa could help. I think, uh, all right, well, Lisa says, I don't want to go to the fun house. I don't want to stay out any later than this. We are breaking curfew. And she's going to get all amped up about this and go up to the mime and kind of just stomp her feet and say, we need an adult and you have to help us. It's your job. You're the adult here. And she's going to try to intimidate him. Okay. <laughs> Lisa style. Yes. Uh, that get? is an 11. Oh, nice. okay. So you stamp your feet at him like multiple times. And with every stamp, you see he like backs up and he's being like super dramatic and mimey, right? Like, ugh, like he's afraid for his life. And like you stamp and you stamp and you stamp and you're like, I need an adult. And you like make this big scene. And he's like. <laughs> and you can see for the first time, this clown does not have a smile on his face. Like the frown that's drawn on his face is like punctuated by how frowny his actual face is. And he just kind of glares at you and his eyes look really mean, almost like they're ablaze a little bit. And uh, he like turns around like sharply and he points at the fun house and he like points and points and points. And you can see he's doing like a really like mimey kind of like, kind of point. Um, and as you guys kind of follow his finger with your gaze, He's pointing at the fun house, but standing right on top of the fun house, there's like a little um, kind of like a, a metal grate that people like will step up into the fun house. Standing outside of that and leaning against the uh, the mouth of the fun house, you can see there's a glowing ember of like a cigarette, like a cigarette or maybe a cigar. And you see a hand kind of come up and take it out of his mouth. And he steps forward into the light. You guys see, he looks like he's probably it almost feels like he's too tall. He's like 6'3", really, really tall guy, uh, big shoulders, kind of beefy looking. Um, he's got uh, pate on top, he's bald, and he's got uh, kind of scraggly, curly green hair that's like sticking out from the sides of his head. He's wearing suspenders and uh, you can see he's got kind of like, a, like an old school clown costume with the suspenders and the big bow tie. Um, and he's wearing, his shirt looks like it maybe used to be, white but it's like all sweaty and gross you can't quite make out his face but you see him and he points back at you we're gonna take a break oh. <laughs> i don't like him <laughs> oh man i'm so stressed out <laughs> no more clowns so many clowns <laughs> excellent job with intimidation yeah fantastic all right <laughs> all right uh, bounce house thank you for being with us so far hope you've enjoyed this uh as we have uh, we are going to take a quick break 10 minutes so we'll be back at uh call it 40 after the hour so take a quick break with us stretch out refill whatever you need and come back and i think uh we'll be heading into this fun house but i don't think it's going to be very fun so it's going right, to be everyone. super fun for you, <laughs> for you. exactly <laughs> All right, see you all in a few.
Hello, everyone. We are back. And uh, right off the bat, Savage Clint, thank you so much for $25 donation. Uh, thank you! So, bunch more bennies to the group. Uh, please let me know if uh, you want any of those to go to our wonderful GM. It's me. Otherwise, they will all go to uh, us kids as we head into this house of fun. Candace, take it away. So you guys see uh, this this person standing at the mouth of the fun house, pointing over at you. Um, you can't quite like he's he's a he's a good distance away, so you can't quite like make out his facial expression, but you can see that it doesn't appear to be any kind of smile. Um, he kind of just stares at you guys. Like he puts his he finally puts his hand down. And you see him taking like long drags off of his cigar, looking at you guys, blowing the smoke towards you. And again, like you guys are outside of the amusement pier, so you're not like right up on him or anything. You're not next to him, but he sees you guys with, with Mr. Jingles for sure. AJ has had enough of adults being crappy about this kid who's missing and like weird and not telling the truth. So they are immediately stalking over there just like, Little fists, bald, ready to rock them, sock them robots. <laughs> <laughs> what about the rest of you? Reggie's right behind. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely just on on the case to go and uh, handle this. So, I think Lisa, uh, you pull up the rear. Yeah, Lisa just mutters to herself as she sees the the embers. Smoking's bad for you, and follows the group. So you guys are like charging through the crowd, right? People are moving away from you guys. Um, you're not really having too hard of a time getting over there. But as you kind of cross the threshold into the amusement, like into the amusement pier proper, uh, you hear, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me, children. Yes, 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 yep. When you guys turn around, you see there's a guy in like a striped vest and like a little, um, like a wicker hat kind of tilted to one side and he's got a cane on his arm. He looks like he's probably uh, like 50s, 60s. And uh, he's got like a big white curly kind of mustache. And he's like, excuse me, <clears throat> can't come in here for free. You have tickets? Tickets, children? We need tickets. 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 Yeah, you can get them for me if you want. But you should have tickets. There's also a box office over there. And he points like to a, a booth like a big stripey booth that's like right behind where Mr. Jingles is standing. And is he is he saying for us to go towards the fun house or just specifically? He's he doesn't care where you guys are going. He just is not going to let you in without tickets. How much are tickets? Well, let's see, kids. Nine o'clock. It's a dollar each. Okay. Okay. Could get a hot dog for a dollar. If you're drunk. drunk. Or you could get all of this. And he gestures behind him. And you guys see like there's big, beautiful lights everywhere. The smell of like funnel cake and cotton candy and popcorn is like wafting out. You can see there's, it's mostly adults. Um, again, a couple, of, a couple of little kids like with their, with their parents and things like that, but mostly adults and teenagers riding all the rides on the carousel and all that stuff. Well, and I'll, I'll just start digging through my pockets, see if I have enough allowance as well available. I think I might have. Pretty sure I have. I don't do While you guys are kind of like rummaging and looking for your change and stuff, he starts kind of like, he goes on a tear to you guys. You know, you can't just come in here. You guys, you know, you gotta have good manners. You know, it's important. You gotta make sure you have a ticket. What would I look like? If I just let you in here, everybody else has to pay. So he like starts bending your ear and like really talking to you. And as he's talking, he like looks over at Lisa and notices that she's the one who's like really like responding the most. And then it starts directing all of that, like berating at Lisa. You yes, know, sir. I, it's it's, it's tantamount to stealing. Of course. No, we're so sorry. Uh, it won't happen again. So sorry. Yeah, better. Cause you know, this, this ain't that but that big of a town. And you know, I'm sure, sure I know your parents. <gasps> My Wouldn't want to have to call. Don't late talk at night. Yes. Do you even have a guardian? Do you have a guardian with you? I thought you knew our parents. Yeah, I thought you knew it's our It's a small parents. town. I could definitely find out. Someone around here has got to know you. We I, I could, live I out in the trailer start park. start calling around. I step in front of Lisa. I don't like the way he's 
focusing at her. We didn't know, so we're trying to get them now. Don't yell at my friend. We're Listen, really I'm sorry. Not, I'm not trying to yell to be at you. Sorry. Just, you know, it's it's important. You, know, you, you kids got to learn some respect. Back in my day, you didn't go anywhere without an adult. And if you did, you sure as heck should have had a ticket. Shouldn't just been waltzing in here like you own the place. I'm just saying, you need some respect. Back in this your one day, gets dinosaurs it. were roaming the earth. Um, I am yeah, I'm old. That's so what? Not the best choice, <laughs> but I'm gonna lean into one of my hindrances and just drop a dollar and go. I'm just, I'm no longer talking to him. We gotta go. Okay. I wanna go. I'm beelining it towards Freckles. I don't, we've done what we need to do for this man. He can talk to himself if he'd like. So he, you drop your dollar and he goes, yeah, see, she, she understands. This child understands. This one, I can tell you understand. You're looking at me. We got a connection right now. You know what's right from wrong, don't you, young lady? I go over and like hands on Lisa's shoulders and just, you know, drop, yeah, two more dollars and, and just push her out of the way and, and carry on after uh, Reggie. I do know right from wrong. <laughs> you can I... see he just like looks really satisfied. Like, I've done my job today. I put my four quarters on the ground and walk away from him. Now, why is Zaker? Ah, I better not catch you over here again trying to fool me. And you see he kind of like bends over and he's trying to like get to them and he has his little cane and he's like trying to like bend down to get the Oh, coins. I feel bad if he has a cane. Well, I feel guilty now. I feel oh, so no. guilty now. I didn't think he was, yeah. oh. He does. I mean, I was still rude, but I feel guilty <laughs> about it now. <laughs> So you guys, uh, you guys, you guys are, are able to bypass him. Uh, he he kind of leaves you alone after that. Um, you can see, like, once you're in, he like doesn't even turn around to look at you guys. Like, all he wanted was the money. Um, and as you guys kind of start walking toward, you get closer and closer and closer uh, to the mouth of this fun house. And um, everybody, roll me notice. Nice. 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 Oh, yes, that's two. Seven for Lisa. Okay. I'm going to use my last mini. <laughs> 17 for Benji. Ooh, okay. 14 for AJ. Okay. Four. There. Four. Like okay. Three raises so, for you, Benji? <laughs> the uh, success is all two, around. Uh, six, 12, and a, 50, a five. So, yeah. yeah. Two, two raises. Yeah. So, for, for uh, Lisa and for Reggie, you guys are a little bit overwhelmed. There's a lot of people in here. Um, it's very crowded in the entrance. People are coming in after you. People are trying to leave as well. And there's really no like clear entrance or exit kind of situation. Um, people are kind of going, kind of streaming through both doors. There's a place, obviously, that you guys just went through where you have to enter, but exit, you can go kind of any way you want. Um, so you guys are kind of trying to like get through and everything, fighting the tide a little bit. Um, but Benji and AJ, you guys like have like heightened awareness after you know this this altercation with this old man. You have no regrets. You just kind of storm through. And uh, this man that you that you now know is is uh, Freckles, right? As you guys kind of walk toward him, the closer you get, the more in focus he becomes, and you start seeing kind of a little bit more about him. And and sure enough, this this shirt looks like dingy and stained. Um, it's got like yellowing under the arms, like kind of a brownish like trail down the front of it. Um, clearly just a messy and like disgusting looking shirt. He's got some frayed suspenders. Um, he's got uh, these like, you know, the big clown shoes and everything, but they're all kind of scuffed. Like he doesn't, he doesn't look good at all. He looks like he'd probably stink. He's smoking like a really fat kind of oversized cigar. And you see him kind of like hawking loogies and like spitting every couple of minutes, like after he takes a couple of drags. And he's not taking his eyes off you. He can see like he's he's watching all of you guys and uh, smoking and everything. His face, again, like you can see that he's wearing his clown makeup, like the clown white and, you know, the, how, how he has like, you know, other kind of decorations on his face and everything. Um, he's got kind of like a, like a, like shapes around his eyes. So he's got kind of like this like round circle under each eye. But inside, instead of that bright blue, you know, that that the other, you know, that dot the other clown had, right? He's got like black in here. And he's got like bright, bright, like red, like lips that have like black outlined around them. And it's kind of flat and like straight across. And you can see his skin is kind of like um, pitted a little bit. Like his makeup looks uneven and like it's like kind of greasy on his face. Um, and you see him, he's just kind of leaning back, kicked back. His arms are crossed. 
and he's staring at you guys. No hat. You can see he's got a bald head, but his head is the same color as the rest of him. Like, it's like that greasy, like, kind of white kind of paint all over his head and his face. And then he has hair sticking out on the sides. I'm going to go up and match his energy. Are you freckles? (sighs) He takes his cigar out of his mouth. Yeah? What's it to you? We're investigating. Yeah, you little detectives or something? Yeah, we are. Mm. Mm-hmm. Excuse me if I'm not impressed. Heard there might be, uh... Heard there might be... Things run around at night that we need to be aware of. Yeah, I mean, somebody as little as you, you got to be aware of everything, don't you? What do you know about the missing kid? He just, like, like blinks at you. It takes a long, long, extended drag from his cigar and just blows it at you guys. <coughs> missing kid? What missing kid? The, 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 the kid that is kid. missing that used to work at the hot dog cart. There's a kid at the hot dog cart right now. Looks familiar to me. He's a different kid the other night, though. What, that little blonde boy? Oh, so you do know about the kid that's no longer, that was missing? I mean, I ain't seen him in a couple of days, if that's what you mean. Is that a lie? A lie? What kind of lie you think I'm telling, little girl? Well, did you see him for real, though? Yeah, I saw him. Freckles, do all adults tell the truth? <laughs> Not if they're smart. Mm. He takes another long drag, puts it out. Did you talk to him last time you saw him? I talked to a lot of people. He but asked about one specific one. one. The one I mean, I, I used to talk to him every day. He'd come by the amusement pier, get himself some popcorn. Did you talk to him the last time you saw him? I think I did. Yeah, I think I did. Uh, came to tell me there was some ruckus on the beach. I sent him right back where he came from. What kind of ruckus? I don't know. Some teenagers making trouble, I think. What did he I feel like a little bit of Lisa is rubbing off of me because I feel like a child, yeah, he's a teenager, came to you, an adult asked for help and you just sent him back to where he was? You didn't help at all? That's what you're supposed to do. What did he need help with? What did he he say was there? I can't remember. Didn't seem important. He's kind of looking at all of you. You can see that the the energy that has gotten you really far this evening, right? Of either being like really sweet and helpful or being like really intense and questioning. Like this guy is not phased by anything you guys are putting down. He is cool as a cucumber looking at you guys. He takes another cigar out of his shirt pocket, snaps his fingers, a lighter appears and he lights it. Can I try and steal his cigar as he's about to put it in his mouth? You can, yeah. Roll me, uh, I think it would be an opposed roll with your thievery and my agility. Okay. Let's see. Did Did he seem worried or scared when he talked to you? I don't know. He seemed like a kid. Look at you guys all spun up. I'm going to spend my last Benny. Okay. And I can pick whichever total I get, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, then I go, I, I take my six that I got before. Six? Okay. Mm-hmm. That's the one to beat. Sorry. 
I got an eight. Damn it. <laughs> you uh, you reach out to kind of try to snatch his, his cigar from him. And um, he's like, almost like too fast. Like, it's like he sees you coming a mile away. And he just kind of like dips his, dips his shoulder and brings it back up and looks at you. Oh, look at you. Grabby hands. Come around here talking about what's polite. Doesn't seem like you're very polite at all. I never said anything about polite. That was them. Mm-hmm. I could see. Why don't Any other questions, kids? Yeah, why don't you seem to care that that kid was killed? Kids are like little pests. Without we us, do, we do what we can have here. This. Yeah, without your parents, I wouldn't have all this. So I make sure I'm nice to the parents, but uh, you guys, they could just make more of you, right? That kid had parents too. That's a shame. I'm sure they're mighty sad. He didn't have parents. His parents died. Even better. Nobody's missing him, right? Makes your job a lot easier. A lot of people are missing him. Hmm. Well, my heart goes out to him, kids. What heart? <laughs> I'm sure no I one like misses you. you, Freckles. Oh, probably not, no. I mean, except the people I pay. They might miss me. I don't think even them. I don't want to talk to him anymore. I don't want to talk to him either. You guys see him like suck down the rest of this like cigar as you guys are questioning him. He's smoking more and more and more and more. It's like the only tell this guy has that he's even a little bit nervous is like that he is just like you can see like just inches and inches and inches of the cigar is just getting worn down as he's talking to you. He finishes his second cigar as you guys kind of wrap up. And he says, yeah, all right, well, uh, I'm sure you guys know where to find me if you need me, right? You be if... here tomorrow morning? Maybe. Or does Maybe the uh, sun bother you? The sun, I mean, I could probably use a tan, huh? Shower. <laughs> Don't worry about it, all right? Last time I saw that kid, he came in the fun house. He took a look around, had a good time, lots of smiles, went back down on the beach. I can show you if you want. Come on, let's go. And you see him, he walks, he turns around on his heel, chucks the, the butt of his cigar, and walks into the fun house. Take I'm going to turn to the group. Him. I'm very frustrated, but I'm absolutely like wanting to go in. AJ's already going. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm I'm going in. Lisa looks helplessly at Reggie. What do we do? Just hold the hand out and just follow the other two. We'll be no better than the pests he talks about if we don't. We have to go in. We have to go. So you guys like look into the mouth of this clown and you can see that the first kind of area that you have to go through, it looks like it's a, a big barrel kind of, right? Just like a gigantic barrel. Usually these things, um, they kind of rotate like a cement mixer. Usually these things have like a walkway. This one has no walkway. It's just you trying to like keep your balance as you go through. Um, you guys are all kind of standing at the mouth of this thing and the lights start to flicker around you. Mm -mm for a second they flip off. When they come back on, you can see he's a lot further through this tunnel than you thought he'd be. The second time it flickers off, he's gone. You can't see him anywhere. When Assumedly he, he has passed through and gone ahead. When he, when the lights flicker back on, does Reggie have a, a remembrance of something else that she's seen before? Be a little more specific. Of the thing that I am, that she herself is scared of? You get, you get a very kind of eerie feeling. Okay. You're definitely a little bit nervous. Not nervous enough at this point to be at any negatives, okay. but it's definitely deeply unsettling for you and you, you really don't want to go in. Like your friends are gung-ho, but you're just like, this is inching closer and closer <laughs> to like your worst nightmare. Yeah. Does Lisa notice this? I would assume some kind of signal she might pick up on. 
I don't think Reggie is outwardly like physically doing anything. It's more of that stillness when you get scared, you know? You just kind of stop moving. It's that. You might notice that. Yeah. I mean, especially for Reggie, who's so physical and fast. All the time. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe uh, take a Benny from Lisa and uh, she'll say, hey, hey, it's okay. And she'll squeeze your hand and uh, look furtively around because it's absolutely not okay. So, you guys take your first steps into this this tunnel, and um, we're gonna go ahead and do a dramatic task for the Funhouse, okay? So there's gonna be three rounds, um, and during these three rounds, you guys have to get 15 tokens, right? Um, you get one token when you get a basic success. When you get a raise, you get two tokens, okay? And I believe that's the maximum. You can get a maximum. So if you get if you get like above that, if you get like a crazy like 18 or something like that, I don't know that you get. Todd, correct me if I'm wrong. Do you get additional? Tokens? I run it for I run it for every raise you get a token. Okay, cool. So then for every raise, then you're calling. <laughs> okay, um, you guys are gonna need 16 tokens in three rounds because it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, but at the end of the day, that just means that you need you know like additional just just some raises and things like that, which you guys have been rolling great all night, so I have no doubts in your mind. Um, each section, though, each each time that you guys roll, it's going to be a different room of of the fun house, um, and you can't use the same skill twice. So you can use any of the skills that you have to roll. Um, like for example, if you when you're walking through here, if you want to use like athletics or something like that, you have a good score in athletics, you can do that to like hang onto the walls and make sure that you're doing everything you can. You just have to have a good reason why you're using what you're using. Um, I'm going to say instead of being super stringent and saying you can't use the same thing twice, I'll say two times is the max. So you can't use like athletics for all three rooms or notice for all three rooms or whatever, you know, whatever you want to offer up. Sound good? Good? No. Awesome. So I think... <laughs> Critical failures subtract, by the way. That's right. Critical failures Oof. will subtract your, uh, your, One your successes. Right? Or, yeah, so one, one token. Yeah. And then um, I have to deal you guys in as well, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, because if you get a club on it, uh, let me set that up for you, Candice. Thank you. Um, so if you get a club, that's a, that's a complication. And it means you have a minus two to, the, um, to your turn. Yes. Now it's up to Candice if she wants to go rules as written. If you normally act on your turn in a dramatic task with a club and you critically fail, the entire task is a failure. Correct. You now, can support, however, on that turn. Yes. And you don't face that penalty. You can still get the critical fail, but like you don't fail everything in that situation. So if you have a clubs, you may want to consider only doing a support role. I will allow you to spend a Benny if you want a new card, if that's allowed. Yes, absolutely. Yep. You know, it's. If you want um, another card, then I'll, I'll I'll allow that with another Benny. Okay, so cards are out. Uh, we have uh, Reggie with Queen of Hearts, AJ with a Jack of Hearts, Lisa with a Seven of Clubs, and then Benji with a Six of Diamonds. So, Lisa, would you like a new card? Um, I think I'll keep it because I have some benefits for supporting. Okay. Yep, I'll keep it. Okay, so... You guys take your first steps in. Um, you put one foot in front of the other, just, you know, as normal. Reggie, despite the fact that you're, like, really terrified right now, and it is not a good time for you, you find yourself just being just inextricably kind of drawn to this. Like, you want to face your fears and just kind of get it over with. And uh, you take your first steps in, and you try to kind of adjust to it, and you start walking in, in into this into this like tunnel into this tube, but you realize like the further in you go, the quicker the pace starts to seem of this revolving tube that you're in. So go ahead and um, choose choose whatever it is that you would like to roll to attempt to kind of get through this without a problem. I am going to choose my agility. Okay. Athletics. All right. My D8 exploded. Ooh, strong start. 14. 14, nice. okay. 
So that is a hit with two raises. Two raises. So you get two tokens. Um, you sh- kind of struggle at first. It's a little too much for you. Um, the music gets louder and louder and it's kind of like ringing in your ears and it just freaks you out so much that you just like, just haul it just right through and you kind of sprint through and like all of that like athletic conditioning and calisthenics and stuff that you have to do for all your sports, it just kicks in right away and you're able to kind of just like be fleet of foot and like get right through it and get to the other side. Um, when you get there, you can see there's kind of like a little like platform, like a little landing and then you can see like the the next room has um, kind of like a curtain in front of it for you to go through. Um, but you look back and you see like your friends kind of looking scared. Do you stay or? Oh, I stay. Cool, okay. So that's two tokens so far. <laughs> Next up, we've got AJ. AJ has just become full of rage. Um, sh- she's been pretending for the most part that Brett was her friend. But now the pretending has become very real and very, like, like she's she's attached to him now. And the fact that Freckles is so dismissive is exceptionally upsetting. So I'm also going to use my athletics to just try to power through okay. and, like, harness the rage and go. Uh, I have seven. Seven, okay, that's a hit. That's a success. So, um, same thing for you, AJ. You walk through, and at first you're just like a little overwhelmed, but your rage just kind of boils you up. And you stumble a little bit as you're going through, but you see Reggie at the end of the tunnel, like waiting for you, like looking like, yeah, yeah, like looking really pumped. And you're able to kind of run up there and meet her. And she kind of grabs your hand and pulls you through the last couple of inches of this giant tunnel. Good job. Yeah, you made it, you made it. I'm gonna yell back to the others. It gets faster as you go, be careful. So Lisa, you said that um, you had wanted to do some supporting, right? Yeah, I have an edge that gives me a free reroll on any support roll. So I feel like I have some help to give. Okay, so let's call it, um, you're gonna support uh, Benji. I will, I'll probably like as well, um, kind of take her hand Mm -hmm. and and say, we got this, come on. Yeah, okay. I kind of want your robot with the four arms right now. I think it would help. That that would be amazing, actually. How long would it take to make something like that? Let's go. Um, Do I have to pick which stat? Yes. Go ahead and pick which which stat that you would like. Now, because you're supporting Todd, um, you have and, and you're not specifically dealing with like the agility part of it. You can mm-hmm. choose anything that makes sense for the situation for you. Um, Benji, what are or, yeah. what are you considering rolling? Um, potentially riding. I was going to argue for it's agility skill, so riding mm-hmm. and in balance and okay, yeah. So because of your, because of the way that you understand science um, and like physics and things like that, your dad, you know, teaches you all the time, you know, all kinds of ways to, um, to get your balance. Like when he taught you how to ride a bike and all that stuff, that was kind of what he, that was the approach that he gave was the scientific version of trying to balance yourself on your bike and your skateboard. I think yeah. um, for Lisa, maybe I'm trying to go with my best dad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was- Here's my version of min-maxing. So she will try to persuade Benji that if he can just create like a really quick like prototype out of the things in his backpack, maybe it can help them get through this. I know it's not gonna be perfect, but just give it a try. So she's trying to persuade him to figure out a way to help them through. Okay. And even if he doesn't like end up making something since Todd is gonna roll um, writing, that's like still like giving him that gumption that like get up and go to just complete this task and like move forward with the both of you in tow. Okay, so go ahead and roll for me. Reggie's considering moving going. So I have a seven, I rolled persuasion. I'm not entirely sure if I'm doing this right. So just let me know if I'm rolling the wrong. Yeah, you're good. Did you also roll your wild die as well? I did. Okay. So you gotta take a minus two off of that because of the clubs. Right. So that's a five, that's still a success. That's a plus one to Todd. 
to Benji, excuse me. Okay. All right. Uh, I will. I'm gonna spend a Benny. Uh. All right. A six. Six with the six. plus one. Yeah, with the plus. So okay. single success. So single success. Excellent. You guys uh, kind of just head through. Lisa, Benji kind of just grabs your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> grabs your hand. And like, I imagine, like Benji, you just like haul ass through the, the tunnel. Yeah, you just kind of make a run for it. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it's it's doing the swirl and whatnot and, and kind of like trying to go with that. And, and just to try to explain, you know, you just have to work with the spin. Just Just don't fight it. And you'll go with it and just kind of pull us through. She, she's right there in tow, um, still trying to persuade that maybe there's a better way to do this, but she's going along for the ride. As soon as we get past that, I definitely like go to let go of the hand. Um, yeah, she's she drops the hand too. She's like, please. <laughs> mm. as, as he kind of like pulled you along, and he's explaining the science behind it. That starts to kind of calm you a little bit, Lisa. Like, you, you, there, you have a certain comfort with facts, and him kind of explaining the facts, the facts behind the way this thing is working, is is definitely kind of easing your your tension a little bit. When you guys end up um, on that platform, you can see in front of you, um, kind of a slightly smaller opening. Um, the first one is nice and wide because it's that big, like wide mouth. This one is kind of more of a standard kind of door opening. Um, there's a mural kind of on the wall in front of you that has like um, all kinds of clowns with like really like long tongues that are kind of like intertwining like above the door and stuff. And um, as you kind of walk through the, the plastic, it's like plastic strips that are hanging in the doorway, almost like a butcher shop. And you, uh, you park them and you kind of peek your head inside and it's a mirror maze. So you guys walk in, there's kind of like mirrors everywhere, hall of mirrors. Um, at first it's kind of cute. Like the first few that you encounter make one makes you really squat and kind of short and fat. The other one makes you like really tall and skinny. Another one kind of like is just on your face and makes your face seem really wide. Um, and you guys are really excited to kind of go through there. But after a while, you realize that you're getting turned around. You're getting really disoriented. And every time you try to move somewhere, it kind of seems like there's a mirror there. Let's does anyone, draw. Does anyone, uh, I got it. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, ooh, and that's that's wonderful. Uh, so, no top clubs. of round two, Benji, uh, and then Lisa, AJ, and Reggie. Does, does anyone think they can, who, who's, who's good at, at knowing their way around? I kind of do. I I think I can tell the could difference it, between it, like mirrors tracking that and stuff. Nah. I'm moving around, but I'm not good at really finding my way. Hmm. I can um, tell the difference between stuff a lot, but not really. I notice a lot of things. Ooh, like if yeah, someone's doing something up. bad, I, I I can see it like right away. You I'm gonna spins out of your pocket earlier. Can we just mark on the mirrors or make the mark as we go through to maybe Hansel and Gretel our way through this? I mean, those are my favorite pens, so just be careful, okay? And she reaches into her pocket and pulls out some uh, of those pens with the eraser on the, the cap, and she hands those out to you guys. I'm going to uh, pull, start pulling some things out of my pack and um, basically kind of like, I want to make shifts, uh, and I'm, I'm going to do a support here. Okay. I'm going to make shifts uh, kind of like a compass type apparatus. Uh, in the form of boost lower trait. Okay. I'm gonna try and boost somebody else's uh, inability for somebody else. Excellent, okay. So. Are you spending an extra power point for everybody or just one person? Um, extra. I, I can only get, I can get one other person because for this it's, uh, I'm using my gadgeteer mm -hmm. ability and I can only spend three power points. So I will uh, upgrade two people. So I'll go. Uh, Reggie and um, Reggie and AJ, I think. Okay. Uh, and I will boost uh, targets, trait, attribute, or skill. Do you do any rolling with this? 
do I? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Lisa will see you're about to do science, and she's like, "All right, Benji, this is what I'm talking about." I'll do. Take, I'll do take a notice. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna increase attempt to boost notice for both of you two uh, here and. Take a Benny from me, Benji. Okay, one die type, two with a raise for five rounds. So I need to go ahead and Gadgeteer, spending three power points. Power points. Um, I think I still have to roll to see if it's a success. Each gadget is created with a a weird science roll at minus two. Oh no. Okay, well, here we go. You got this. You can Thank do you this. for that. Uh... Oh, I think I used gadgetry, actually. That is a D10. All right. Uh... Empty it. I want that raise. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna try one more. Spend a Benny. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. There it is. Nine. That'll be a raise. So that raises your notice die up uh, two two levels. So whatever your die is, it goes up by two for five rounds. Oh. Okay. So I just kind of like create this little almost compass-like gadget and, and hand it over to you to to just really help you pay attention to what you're doing. So as as Benji is uh, kind of working this kind of you know this this scientific kind of gadgetry right as he's trying to kind of work on this mass of bits and bobs in his hand, um, some of you guys start kind of hearing like snickering and like <laughs> <laughs> like just echoing kind of around you. It sounds like it's bouncing off the mirrors. Next up, we've got Lisa. What are you rolling to get through here? Um, Lisa. Lisa's going to try to not think about all the times she's heard people laughing at her behind her back at school. Not think about all of those snickers and kind of giggling behind the hand at her expense and just focus on the here and now. So she's gonna make herself very small and just try to sneak through this area so that she doesn't draw the laughter and tries to just pretend she's not the source of it. Um, so okay. she's use her stealth. Excellent, okay. She gets a five. Five, that's a success. Just to check in with you guys, that's five successes so far out of the 16 that you need. So we're doing good. Um, you, you kind of hear this, the snickering and you, you, like, like you said, you kind of bear down and you're just like, I'm not doing this, not today. And you start kind of getting really, really kind of like low to the ground. And you start noticing that, you know, as you're moving through, you're able to, because you're like kind of trying to stay kind of low and be sneaky with it, you're able to kind of feel, feel around for the edges of these mirrors. So even though you can't really see which way to go, your hand can like, your hand's kind of guiding you through to the next kind of area and you start passing through the mirror maze. Would it be possible, and I don't know mechanically if this has any impact, but since Reggie did mention the pens and I gave everyone the pens, mm -hmm. can I mark the path that I'm following as I go? Um, yeah, if you like. Kind of like just dragging the pen along the edge of the mirror at the bottom. Yeah. I mean, they already, they're all, they'll already have pluses to their, to their notice because of Benji. Um, so that's fine. That'll just enhance their, like, what they've already got going. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. So next up, we have AJ. Um, I'm going to use my notice just to see, like, which mirrors look false, which, like, reflections don't line up. Okay. Um, I think AJ's had experience with, like, um, two-way mirrors. Mm-hmm. So I think also like looking out for any signs of that, okay. and, like what that might mean. Uh, I don't have a D12 in here with me, so I'm just <laughs> gonna roll two D6s. Perfect. Uh, you just roll it in the game too if you enough. want. Yeah, mm -hmm. perfect, that's fine. Uh, 
I... I'm gonna... Can I spend a group, Benny? You sure can. Okay. I'm gonna spend a group, Benny. And just... Okay, so I got to 12. A 12. Awesome. Nice. So that's two successes. Very, very nice. Um, you start looking around and you're seeing kind of shadows in some of these mirrors. They're very quick moving. Um, definitely not welcoming at all. You can see them kind of like speeding by, like someone's running behind the mirrors or something like that. And as you kind of get toward the end, you pass one mirror that like kind of makes you do a double take. It has that kind of dull flatness to it that those two-sided mirrors get, right? When you're looking at it, you can see yourself and it's a regular mirror, but there's something kind of like um, almost opaque about it. You know what I mean? Like you get, yeah. it's like this weird flatness and dullness to this image. And you recognize that you're probably being watched while you're I'm, going through this maze. I'm gonna tilt my head up and glare at the height that I remember Freckles being and kind of tighten my fists around the stake in my hand. Okay, very good. Next up, and last but not least, we've got Reggie. Um, Reggie is freaking out. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, um, I think she is, I feel like she is seeing things in the mirror that's probably not there because she's so scared. So I think she's just trying to like shut everything out and she's going to use her survive, um, her, where did it go? My survival, I'm going to use her okay. survival. And I'm just like, I can get out of here. I've done this before, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, I'll be okay. And just kind of talking to myself and I'm going to roll my survival. Okay. And I'm going to use a group mini, please. Go for it. I got the exact same thing, so I got a five. <laughs> try again five? if you want. You try again one time. Yeah, we have plenty of bennies. Thank you so much to our audience. Appreciate Stay that, audience. <laughs> I'm not trying again. I got this exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> the universe is telling you something. Okay. Well, I was what I was supposed to get on this, apparently. <laughs> so you're you're kind of still standing there. The others have sort of started to move through this maze, and you're looking around, and you can see there's like little marks and stuff. Um, like on the on the on some of the mirrors at first you get a little disoriented because the marks are reflecting in other mirrors so some of the marks look like they're on mirrors that they're not actually appearing on and you get a little like you start to breathe a little heavy and then you hear like a bump up against the back side of the mirror closest to you and <laughs> like right almost like someone's standing right behind you and your your survival instincts absolutely kick in you just like look around you you remember you know what what heaven has taught you about you know her girl scouting and like trying to find your way and finding them following the north star and you kind of just throw caution to the wind and you just you just run for it you bolt you bump into like a mirror along the way but finally like you see your friends and you're able to like grab a hold of them and you guys kind of just sit there for a second and, and get your bearings um aj do you tell them what what you what, what you what you think you're seeing in this other mirror yeah, I'm gonna drop my voice just loud enough and try not to move my lips and say, someone watching us through that mirror. Do you think we can get behind it? Or what if we just break it? It's bad luck to break a mirror. Carry a softball bat. Don't go anywhere without one. So it is an option. That's up to you guys. I think Lisa's in sneak mode, so she would probably try to get behind the mirror, if only to prove that AJ is just, you know, extrapolating, making things up. Like, it's just nothing. It's nothing. It's just a mirror. Someone's is it gonna, there. I, I mean, we, we probably know if someone is, who it is. Yeah. I mean, we can, but I think it's we just, just need to keep one, going. Right? It was the only one. As long as we're not in front of it, they can't, maybe they can't. So you've, you've gotten to like the next doorway, right? And this one's kind of just open. You can see kind of more of the, more of the painting of, of like the clown with like the tongue and stuff like that. This time it's, um, it's like frowny faced clowns, um, but their eyebrows look like kind of like, like, like they're down, like they're kind of angry yes. and their mouths are kind of open and there's like water coming out. It's like rainbow colors kind of like coming down the sides. Don't like it. 
Oh. And um, yeah, and <laughs> it's, it's like three of them, like a triptych. And um, when you when you kind of look to your to your right, it's a regular mirror. But when you look to your left, now that AJ has mentioned it, you can see it's a little dull. Um, you guys probably wouldn't have been to like a police station or in any situation where there's a two sided mirror. But Benji, you've seen plenty of, of police programs um, with your dad yeah. uh, that kind of came in handy last time. You're looking at that mirror and that that and it looks a lot like what you've seen on television. Um, it kind of looks like almost like there's a shadow behind the mirror. Okay, I misunderstood. I thought it was part of the mirror maze and that we right, could probably yeah. get to the other side. So yeah, I think Lisa would just let everyone know that breaking a mirror is bad luck, but go with the will of the group. Okay. There there's probably is something behind there. Just you wanna keep moving though? Do you wanna move? Yes, I, yes, I think let's get out of here. Going. Yeah. Yeah. We go, we go. So as you guys are kind of discussing and trying to decide what you want to do next. You guys can hear Lisa. Benji. Did you guys hear that? Benji. <laughs> like right behind you guys. Uh, when you turn you around, hear? there's nothing there. But you can hear like little voices talking to you guys. We know you're there, Freckles. Just We're going to find you. Yeah, we know you're there. This kind of pushes you guys forward into the next room. Um, you guys are all kind of like looking behind you, trying to kind of figure out what's going on. Um, you kind of walk into this room and you realize it's it's kind of darker than the others. The, the room you just came from has a ton of lights because that's, you know, the nature of mirrors, right? You need the lights in order for it to look confusing, right? This room is super dark, especially now that you've had all this light kind of shining in your eyes. Um, and as, as your eyes kind of start to adjust, you see a clown, like a giant clown in front of you. Um, and it kind of shocks you for a second. As we're Everybody, also moving around, sorry, do we yeah. smell c cigar smoke at all? Yeah, go ahead and roll me. Well, we're in a dramatic task, so I won't make you roll additionally, especially because everybody just did well in their notice rolls. You do smell cigar smoke. You smell okay. sweat. You smell um, this weird, this weird fragrance. Um, some of you, like AJ, you might know because you paint a lot. It's it's the smell of like a like an oil based paint, like a grease paint. Yeah. But it smells like old, like it's been left out or something like that. It smells like the paint Annalisa lets me use, just like when she's watching. You guys turn around and pivot, and in front of you is this giant clown. But as you kind of like look a little bit, kind of clo more closely at it, and you get a little closer because it's not really moving. You realize it's a giant like life-sized beanbag that's suspended from the ceiling. Um, it looks like it's about six feet and painted on the front of it is a clown. And this one looks pretty happy and friendly. It has like a little hand up that looks like it makes it look like it's waving. It's got a big giant like grin on its face, happy eyes, you know, very smiley looking, exactly what you would expect to see in here. Um, but you notice that, again, the lights around you, there's like a dull glow kind of coming from the lights um, at, at either side of this room. And it's really dark in here. Like you can't see the back of this place. You can just see that there's a ton of bean bags everywhere in front of you. Let's, uh, let's go into our last round, our final round of this dramatic task. We need 16 total? Yes. Oh man, we are well behind kids. What are, we, what are we at? Eight, I believe. Yes. Oh, we got Oof. this. You're okay. Maybe nothing bad will happen if you don't get the dramatic pass. <laughs> you guys don't look like you're buying it. Okay. So, <laughs> so who is up first in oh, this yeah. round me, uh, three? Pants. Reggie. Oh, no, you look at that. Oh man! Clubs for every person. Oh boy! Oh my God! Um, who yeah, wants I mean, to I... use some bennies? I have to tell you guys. Clubs are bad, four right? clubs, four clubs more than makes up for me not having a lot of bennies for from from. Yeah, I, you guys can even <laughs> take some of my bennies. If you want. So we have like eighteen Christmas player bennies. GM. We are pretty good there. If anybody has <laughs> any of their own, but uh, definitely, I think, yeah. Okay. Uh, Reggie, you getting a new card? Yeah, it just takes a bit to do so. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, drawing a card. Please don't be in a club. 
Uh, six of hearts. Okay. Okay. Uh, AJ taking a new card. If it's okay for me to use another group, Benny. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, King of Spades. Okay. I will definitely take a new card. Oh, see another club. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw one more. Oh my god, another club. <laughs> no! What a, what a club does? I know it does something bad, but... It gives me minus two to two. my attempt, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Um, have some, yeah, I want to catch up here. Reggie, you used a group Benny, right? No, I used one of mine. I have okay, one of AJ, you used a group Benny. I did. All right, I used... One, two, so three. All right, um... I'm gonna take one more. Do it. Nine of hearts. There you go. Okay. And Lisa. Spending a Benny for a new draw, please. Five of spades. Okay. All right. Got rid of rubble. So. Lovely. Top of the round, AJ. Um. So AJ, you can see ahead of you. There's dozens of these things suspended from the wall the only reason that like you know how many there might be because you can kind of see them they're like stacked up like you can't really tell what might be behind each row but when you look up at the ceiling you can see all the chains that all of these bags are suspending from so you can see that there's definitely a ton of them um and you you, you have to kind of like beat them away to kind of make your way through but when you push on one it's pretty heavy like it's it's not you know a light kind of bean bag. It's it's like a like almost like a like a boxing bag. Um I think I'm gonna take out my flashlight and click it on because okay. things are less scary when you're not in the dark. Okay. And I'm gonna start just shining it along the sides and try to find like a skinny little kid size space that we could shimmy along the wall and not have to uh like go through okay so you want to use your notice yeah okay and i still have that bump from yes you do benji okay i don't want to keep using group bennies <laughs> that's what so they're there for you we have to get basically have to get to a person yeah, I'll use one more if that's okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lisa says, "Don't give up, AJ, and take a Benny." Okay, I'll use it too. Just to see if I can. Okay, it's not gonna happen. I got a ten. A ten. Okay, well that's a raise. That's two. Mm -hmm. Um, so you guys are now. 10. Very good. Um, you start kind of pushing your way through with your flashlight, looking for like little openings. Um, and you're able to kind of slip in here and there and like move around all these bean bags. Um, one of them kind of knocks you a little bit and you can feel the weight kind of like hit into you. But because you've got your flashlight, you see it coming, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. kind of strike you unawares. And you're able to kind of just like steady yourself. And you start walking through and everybody kind of sees you go through and and you know once you're gone you're gone like even even the even your light kind of seems to go out in this room They're, it's so full of these these bean bags um but I'm you make trying, it safely mm -hmm. i'm trying to like point it at the ceiling and like wave it a little bit so there's some kind of a beacon but okay i feel like there's probably also like so many chains and everything that it might get diffused and weird so the rest of you you guys see the flashlight kind of bobbing on the ceiling for the first couple of like feet, like maybe two feet. You guys have no idea how big this room is. You can tell that this space is large because when you went in, you could see that the fun house extends pretty far into the amusement pier, but you're not exactly sure how big this room is. Um, so for the first couple of steps that they take, you can see the light kind of dancing on top of the, the ceiling across like all the chains and things like that. But eventually it gets swallowed up by the darkness of the room. Next, we've got Benji. 
Uh, so I so what is the rule on skills? We can't as on a round we can't like I can't do notice again because so you can do notice or... a maximum of two times each okay. person. So if you want All to right. use notice again, you can. It's just okay. like your individual number. All right, I'll say Re Reggie's still got that bumped up. Maybe uh, she will use that. Um, I'm going to just 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 try and think uh, that I can just try and, and muscle and, and burst through these things. Uh, just kind of rush through athletically and try and, you know, thinking back to uh, remembering that last day of school where I, I made it through all the kids, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that are with the backpacks and whatnot and just try and channel that energy and hope I can uh, do that, so. I'm going to give you a plus one because okay. you already had that experience. Okay. And this is bringing you right back to that time and you're feeling really positive. All right, I'm gonna spend a Benny though to try and get a little better. Okay. But I do have a success. Um, one more. Here it is, double, double ace. Uh oh, nine. Another ace. Oh. Well, plus four, 16. Very 17 nice. after the, uh, the plus. So. so that's three successes. Excellent job. You guys only need three more. Told you it wasn't that bad. <laughs> three more. Um, you start kind of pushing your way through. And you're feeling really good. You're feeling strong. You're feeling powerful. You're remembering that day. You start kind of knocking things to the side. A couple of times, you feel like you're about to get held up. You kind of Your breath kind of catches a little bit. You realize it's really dark in here. The further you go the darker it gets and you're, you get a little nervous, but you just power through. And like, once you get kind of halfway through this maze, you can, or what feels like halfway, you can start to see the light from AJ again, kind of dancing on the ceiling. And you start trying to like, kind of follow that to catch up with them. Now over to Reggie, how are you getting through? I think Reggie still has her bat in her hand and is not going to put like, I, my brain has it as a magic a holster. I'm like, that's not how it is, but that's what my brain is imagining. Sure. Um, <laughs> it's probably holstered like in between your back and your backpack. My backpack, like, in, okay, in between yeah. like the, the straps. Um, I think she's just going to move with purpose with her bat, ready to swing at something that's going to come at her and use her fighting to move right. through it. Okay. Uh -huh. still, you do still have your notice benefit, by the way. I do. I could ask, I have, I have a thing, you know, um, I have a hindrance that could potentially make my notice lower right now, so I'm not sure if I want to use it. Okay. Um, what is your I, hindrance? It is, where did it go? Is it this one? Yes, it is oblivious. Um, I get a negative two to all notice rolls to spot traps where avoid enemies getting the drop on me. Yeah, that definitely qualifies. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean... So I don't know if I need to use notice so it would happen in this instance because that makes sense and I'm totally down to do that as well. You would be at a negative two for this. You would have the increased die type. I just don't know if that's worth it for you. If you think that you're safer going with fighting, Roll that. Roll whatever it is that you think is gonna like do Reggie the most the most justice. I think she's okay. gonna roll really fighting this time. Yeah. Okay. Yes. My fighting dice exploding. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Here we go. Let's go. That's a D eight, right? Yeah. So that was uh, uh, I got an eight, and eight, and seven. My brain does not want to do any more math. Twenty three. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I was like, oh. oh my goodness. All right. So three yes. times exploded for a 23? Five, 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 six, five uh, hits. Yeah. yeah. That's five successes. So you guys are golden. You are A OK. You're going to come out of here with more successes than you needed. Reggie, you walk in and like you've just kind of had it. This has been a far wilder night than you had planned. You convinced Lisa to go out. You know that she doesn't like being out late at night. She she wants to be at home hanging out. Your sister is there with her adoring friends. You guys could be living like kings and queens right now. You really deeply resent that you have to be there and that this is even happening to you. 
And as you kind of go through, you don't even look at the clowns. You just like have your bat out and you're just like, bah, 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 like batting them away and moving through and like kind of dodging and ducking and stuff. And you get, you catch up with Benji. Like you are so quick that you almost hit him. You turn, you turn kind of around one of the corners and you're like, ah! and it's just Benji. And he's like, <laughs> Is it, well, easy, easy. You, what, you made it through there quick. I sure did. <clears throat> I did. I did. Where's Lisa? Guys. Guys. Lisa, come on. Come Hello? on, just. We're over here. It's okay. We're right here. Follow our voice. Hey, so, you're not just alone. Voices, though, dear God. <laughs> Lisa, you can kind of hear these voices. Um, you can hear Reggie is the best. You kind of hear Benji's. You hear a third voice, and you're not really quite, you can't really make out what they're saying. Oh, God. Um, you think it's probably AJ. Uh -huh. And you you look up in front of you, and oh. these beanbags are just everywhere, and it's really dark. And you start hearing that giggling again. <laughs> Lisa's so weird. She's so weird. <laughs> and it starts getting like louder behind you as you hesitate standing in front of these beanbags. Can we hear this? You guys don't hear anything. You guys are just trying to make it through in the front. You're calling to her, but you don't see any sign of her yet. Mechanics. What are you gonna do to get through here? Mechanical question. Sure. Um, what can I not double up a skill that someone else has used in a previous round? Just yourself. So like, for okay. example, you couldn't use notice for all three of these rounds. You'd have to switch it up. Um, okay. That could, Basically, it keeps people from using only their highest die over Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I, we don't need any of this for the pot, correct? No. So I think Lisa hearing this uh, and being alone and feeling very vulnerable and hearing more friendly voices ahead is just going to also try to power through like Reggie did and use her D4 of athletics to just try to like muscle her way through in just a blind sprint and she has her eyes closed for most of it because she's scared. And so mm -hmm. it's just too much to like look at these things. So she's just running forward with athletics. Okay. Can we help at all? No, because you guys have already taken your turns. Okay. But it's okay. You got all the points you need to get through this. So, so there now you go. Elise is in danger. I think it exploded. It did, yep. Nice. So it's a six. A six. Excellent. So Lisa, you start going forward. And the voices, like you can hear them taunting you. A second one joins in. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa. You can hear them kind of calling to you from behind you. And as you shut your eyes and you just kind of will yourself forward, you surprisingly don't find too much resistance. At first you get through, closing your eyes doesn't even seem to take away because the room is so dark. You're like using your hands to kind of reach out. At one point, you get some resistance in front of you. Like you bump into something head first and uh, you open your eyes for a second and you can see it's like a big giant bean bag, but this one looks like it has arms on the side and the face is like a scary face that has like these big fangs coming out of it, like a ah! face at you. And like, it terrifies you for a second until like you like hear Lisa, Lisa, and you can hear your friends and you kind of snap out of it and you look at it and you look up at the ceiling and you can see the chain hanging there and it breaks the illusion for you. And you just like tear through there, like trying to get around all of these things. And eventually you find all your friends. You guys as a group collectively, you're still in the maze, but you're able to kind of make it out together. Uh, you find and unite with one another and um, you get to the other side. And in the back of the room, you see there's like a really big mural. Um, and it kind of looks like the town, right? It looks like Gulf Haven. It says Morganville on top, which you guys would know from, you know, school. That's what the town used to be called before it became, you know, Gulf Haven, more of like a tourist attraction. Um, and you can see it's like the, it's like a painting of the amusement pier. Um, you can see, you know, some clowns, some acrobats and things like that. There are some lights kind of pointed at it. So you can see it almost looks like there's like black light paint to it too. Like it's kind of glowing under these like weird dark lights. Um, to your right, you can see there's an employee exit. And then uh, that's like, that, there's like a, there's like one light over that one. It looks like it's, you know, just for employees. And to the left, you can see there's an, an exit and there's like a clown, like a life-size like statue of a clown, like a mannequin 
and it has like a motorized arm and it's waving like this. And the mouth of it, the mouth of the door, uh, you can see some shadows kind of like obscuring and obstructing the, uh, the, the exit there. The exit outside of the... the... Yeah, there's two room. doors. So there's one to your right, which is the employee, it says employees only. And then the other one is the exit that has the clown like waving you over to it, the mannequin. Muted lease. We can't go out that door. That's employees only. He so let's go into the clown there. mouth. He probably went in there and he's just hiding because he thinks we he won't go through. We can't go in there. He's not. We, what? He yeah. us in here. I think we, the only, uh, we've made it this far. We have to go. We don't have a ticket to go back there. We don't need a ticket to go back there. Okay. He's been lying and trying let's to go scare us out. this whole time. This is what he gets. And I'll head over there, overconfident. Okay. Let's check the handle, see if it's unlocked. Excellent. Okay. Um, Benny, for playing. And Benny's all around for you guys just playing into, into your archetypes, into your characters so well right now. Um, you guys get over to the door. Benji, you reach out your hand and you look, kind of look left and right. Um, are you trying to be sneaky about this? No, I think overconfidence uh, just goes up and, and is like, okay. let's do this. All right. So I'm going to you... stand at his back and just shine the flashlight around so no one can sneak up on us. Perfect. Okay. Um, as you're shining your flashlight, AJ, you kind of like like pass the 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 exit that you guys were gonna go through, and you can see the the obstruction in there um, are two teenagers making out. There's like a, a boy with like long floppy kind of blonde hair and a boy that has like a buzz cut, and like they are just like going at it hard in this like <laughs> doorway and everything. And they like look over at you when you shine the flashlight at them, and they're like, "Hey, sorry, sorry. chill out." God. Use protection. Oh. Yeah, okay. Mom, thanks. God. And like you see, they just kind of go right so back gross. to what they're doing. Um, Benji, you reach out and you try the door. And it's locked. Like, you can't really, like, get in there. Um, does anybody want to try and use their thanks. lock picking or thievery, perhaps, to try and get inside? I have thievery. I will try. <laughs> I got really excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to use that Benny I just got. And just roll there that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Run away D6. Oh, God. Oh, two fours. Uh, so fours? a four. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you start kind of trying the door. Um, you're not making, you know, a teeny tiny bit of noise. You're making a, a fairly good amount of noise. You can hear like the, the rest of you can hear like the scrapes and stuff as, you know, Reggie kind of produces this bobby pin, like off her pack and like a safety pin and like kind of twists them together and is trying to get in. Um, Lisa, you've seen, you've seen her do this before when she's tried to like get into Heaven's room when they've been arguing or, you know, she's trying to like, you know, bang on Caleb's door and wake him up for, for dinner or something like that. She sometimes has to pick locks. Um, so you kind of see her and she's like really just like focused in on it. Reggie, after a couple of minutes of trying, you hear that familiar click that, you know, that little like unlock and the door is loose. You guys just charge in there. Yes. Well, probably like, <laughs> yeah. are you sneaking? Yeah. No, charge. Yeah, Split. yeah, I think so. Bust right in. Bust in. Whatever the group is doing, Lisa's wringing her hands and saying, we well, are not supposed to be back here and she'll follow it. Okay. With the same energy. AJ, what about you? Oh, I'm I'm ready to wreck shit. I'm mad. <laughs> AJ okay. hasn't stopped being mad. There are like tears of rage coursing down her face. Okay. Unbeknownst to her. Yeah. So Benji kind of takes the lead. AJ, like you're right behind him, like ready to like fuck somebody up. <laughs> and you guys it. bust through the door. It'll stick somebody up. <laughs> That's it. You guys bust through the door. Um and you can see in front of you, there's like this kind of, it, it's kind of poorly lit in here. You can see a row of lockers in front of you. Um, and as you guys all kind of pile in one after the other into this like little like room, um, you guys look to the left and you hear a sh like a blood curdling scream. All of you make me a uh, fear check. You're gonna roll your spirit. spirit. And I, thanks to Brave, Plus two. two. Mm. Spirit. 
and an explode. 13 for me. Nice, okay, that's success. More fun to fail on fear checks, but. I got a five. Okay, that's success. Got a six. Okay. I also got a six. Six, all right, so success is all around. You guys hear this blood, blood curdling scream, like just a screech that is just deafening, especially after kind of being in this mostly silent room that you just came from. And uh, all of you guys kind of turn to look. And at the other end of this locker room, you guys see Dot. That same lady from before, the female clown, except this time she is in her bra and underwear. She's bent over, taking her clown costume off. She has her wig off and her nose off and everything. You can see the makeup is mostly kind of wiped off from her face. And she's staring at you guys. What? What are you doing in here? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Get out of here. You brought a boy in here. And you can see she's like grabbing her clown costume, trying to like put it all over her or whatever, but she's just, like she's she's about to fall over. She's trying to so frantically close Where's herself. Freckles, cover their eyes. Sorry, ma'am. Freckles want us to come this way. Yeah, oh, yeah. What a fucking loser! Oh my god, kids! Oh. Where is he? Where is he? The office is the office is back that way. Just go in there. You're gonna get to a warehouse. Just keep going. Oh my god, get out of here! And she waves you guys like to a door that's like Lisa's right next to where she's already staring. gone. Wherever yep. she's pointing, that is where Lisa's going, and she's just <laughs> staring straight ahead, like into the middle distance. Sorry. Did you see, did you see that? I saw it in her in her <laughs> underwear. <laughs> Benji, cut it out. So oh man. You, you guys kind of come tumbling out of there, um, and uh, so you can hear this door slam behind you, and you can hear her kind of swearing and cussing up a storm. Um, Right in front of you guys, though, you kind of let out into this into this like narrow hallway. It looks like maybe like a, two people could fit side by side. Um, the floor, like the linoleum, is really dingy. Like it's obviously not well kept up. It looks like tons of people have been tr like treading on this for forever. Um, you guys kind of follow the corridor down. You take a right, and um, you kind of start smelling the smell of the ocean a little bit. Um, and as you kind of let out into this into this area, it's like a huge, huge warehouse. Um, you guys are looking around and you can see there's uh there's like a door that's that's open. There's like a little bit of light, like moonlight kind of coming in um, from one of the doors. It's like a double door at one end. And you guys can see the ocean right there. Um, you realize just putting two and two together, you guys know there's um, underneath the pier, like underneath the amusement pier itself, there's like a concrete kind of block. This must be that room. Um, Cause you can definitely see that same view out the door. Um, and as you guys are kind of walking through Everybody roll me notice. Do I still have the plus right now? Yeah, Talk. you do. Okay. Oh, sick. You're not at negatives though. Okay, I was about to ask, do I need to take the negative away? Okay. So I'll take a uh, standard success. Okay. Seven for Lisa. Okay. Five. All right. Nine. Perfect. So all of you guys kind of get into this room. And again, it's really dark. There's some light coming in. Uh, from from that from the beach, like from from the moonlight and a couple of the maybe of uh, the um, like the safety lights on the outside of the building, but inside it is it is very very dark. And as you guys are kind of like touching and making your way through this area, um, you're starting to kind of see like some 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 kind of trashed up um, like amusement park like equipment. So you guys pass a couple of bumper cars, um, and then there's like a big giant like clown head that looks like it's like a big sculpture that's like the size of like all four of you put together, like it's about that wide. It's like this huge kind of clown head. Um, and as you guys kind of get to the clown head and you're looking at it, you guys hear the faintest sound of jingles. And as you guys kind of like try to get your bearings around you, you can see a shadow walking through that door. What do you guys do? Why'd you lead us on this stupid goose chase? Wait, Jingles is the one from outside. Jingles isn't Jingles Freckles. That's is the right? mime. That's the mime. I would like to hide. Yeah, I think I would hide too. <laughs> yeah, probably look around for a quick hiding spot. Yeah, okay. AJ, are you still hiding? Or are you gonna- Everyone, everyone hide, hide everyone. Okay. I think because I yelled, I, I think my yelling was my, was my response to the situation. <laughs> so you see a light click on and like in this light you can see like 
that that figure, that shadowy figure, is now holding this flashlight and starts like looking around and scanning. You guys are like maybe 15, 20 feet away from this person. Like it's a really big room. Um, you're like you could see him kind of like looking around with this flashlight. And as it kind of comes up, as he kind of like looks up at the rafters, you can see it's definitely Mr. Jingles, same guy from before. Um, except he has kind of a furrowed brow now. He doesn't look as friendly as he did before. And he's kind of scanning, trying to see if he sees anything. He doesn't see any of you guys. He kind of like pans back and forth right near where you guys are, kind of huddled behind this clown and like behind these, you know, broken bumper cars and stuff, looks around in the corners and uh, he swipes it. He like sweeps the the light back over to um, a door at the other side, like right across from where you guys are. And standing there in the light is Freckles. You can see the glow of his cigar before and smell the smell of the cigar before like the light gets on him. And you see Jingles kind of stop and his body get really still. And Freckles goes, hey, seen them kids around? Came looking for me. I saw you point. We need to have a talk, me and you. I don't appreciate this. Nobody needs to know about that kid. No one's going to miss him. Now let's get on. And you see the two of them kind of disappear into that door, and it closes. That's where we'll leave it this week. Fiddlesticks. Nice hiding, though, guys. <laughs> I was really hoping it wasn't going to get violent tonight. <laughs> oh, man. Fantastic Ooh. job. I the goodness out of me multiple times over. <laughs> so I'm doing my job. So good. <gasps> Oh, so, so good. Oh, I want to stop. I want to keep going. <laughs> Completely immersed in that horrific fun house. <laughs> oh, man. Indeed. All righty. Candace, thank you so much, as wow. usual. Everyone else, thank you. Great job. Bounce House, thank you so much. Donations, subs, and whatnot tonight. Uh, so... Let's say hello to the wonderful cast here. And in the meantime, if you haven't yet, get in on the giveaway. We have two more copies of Monster Hunters Club to give away, thanks to Fabled Environments, wonderful publisher of that. So exclamation point MHC in the chat. And uh, then after we do introductions, we will draw two more winners. So first off, uh, let's go down to the end. Uh, Allison, say hello and tell us who you are, what you got going on. Well, hello. Um, I'm Allison. I'm Insight Checked on the internet. Uh, you can find me mostly on Twitch or Twitter or YouTube. Uh, those are my main haunts. Um, I just wanted to say again, thank you, Candice. It's so much fun to play with you, and I am so happy to be at this table. And thank you to the other players. Also so much fun to play with you guys. What a, what a delight. So just thanks. It's, I don't take it for granted. Um, and yeah, I run a TTRPG channel where you can find rotating systems, rotating GMs, and rotating uh, uh, players and folks at the table as well. So come check us out on Twitch and then also video games on Thursdays. Uh, we'd love to, to see you there. So thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you, as always. All right, uh, Allegra, say hello. Hey, I'm Allegra. You can find me on Twitter at Lego M2RS. Usually I run with Mayday Roleplay. We play a bunch of different kinds of TTRPGs. Uh, we're finishing out our second arc of our Doom to Repeat game on podcasts. Um, and then tomorrow we're um, jumping into a new campaign with part of our group and we're going to be playing Orbital Blues where we're just going to be a bunch of sad space folks and it's going to be great. And pro I, who knows how many of us will survive? I don't have high hopes for many of us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to echo what Allison said, I've been having such a blast. This is, like I said like last week, this is my first time ever playing Savage Worlds and I'm absolutely obsessed. You guys are all incredible to be at a table with and I'm just, I'm just so pleased. Pleased to have you as well. Thank you so much. Danny, say hello. Hi, I am Danny. I play the absolutely terrified Reggie tonight. Um, <laughs> you can find me online um, at Inked Tink on Twitter. I post a lot of nerdy things, uh, mainly my random middle of the night D&D &D thoughts, and then I just try to start conversations. It's a good time. 
Uh, you can also find me occasionally on Dancing Dice Theater on YouTube. It's a, a newer show and we try to play games that are not D&D &D, um, to introduce new people how to play games. It's a good time. We fail a lot and it's fantastic when we do. Um, also, Candace, you have scared the bejesus out of me multiple times tonight, so thank you. <laughs> I am so excited about what's going to happen next. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure it'll be wonderful as we all head to the pillow tonight thinking of the clowns. So, <laughs> yeah. No. Candace, the Magnificent. Hello, Living everybody. Up to the name, say hello. Thank you very much, Todd. Um, thanks to all of my players. You guys are fantastic. You make it extremely easy for me to do my job. Um, I am Candace Magnificent. I have been your GM for this evening. Um, you guys can find me pretty much all over Todd's channel. So, go check out Dead Planet. Um, and uh, soon to be Mothership Mondays. This Monday night, we'll be streaming um, another mo Mothership game, so you can see me as an Android if you're into that. Uh, you can also find me over um, at Valor Studios. They have some content up, including Tales of Valor and Deadlands that I've been a part of. Um, you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter. Sorry, Twitter at that Candace Girl, and on Instagram and YouTube at Candace the Magnificent. Um, if you're looking at me on YouTube, you will find some. Uh, ice cream reviews. I am bougie about my snacks and I really enjoy fancy ice cream. So if you've ever wondered what like a Jenny's flavor or a Van Leeuwen's flavor tastes like, please get at me. Let me know. I've actually, I'm actually about to um, th record my first uh, request. Somebody asked me to review. Uh, this isn't really fancy, but Little Debbie came out with an ice cream for whatever reason. Nice. And someone has asked me to review that. So I will be probably doing that this weekend and putting it up in the near future. Um, so yeah, please definitely take a look and, um, thank you so much for joining us. This has been a total blast and I feel like a million bucks having such fantastic players and fantastic participants. So thank you for being here, everyone. Thank you for being fantastic GM. Go check out the ice cream videos. They're amazing. They're, they're amazingly well done. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Definitely. <laughs> I have been Todd Moonbounce. Uh, thank you all for being here on my channel. Appreciate it so very much. You can find me online at Todd Moonbounce. Uh, as Candace mentioned, next up for us here in the Bounce House is Monday Mothership, uh, something I'm going to probably do at least maybe try once a month. Uh, so just a random one shot. Uh, I will be running that. Candace will be in there with a few others. Uh, looking forward to that uh, as well. We'll be back next Friday for the finale in this short little tale. Um, I think it's going to be pretty wild, though. I, I really think we're going to... Uh, shit's going to hit the fan. So definitely come back and then... Uh, yeah, wrapping around with that, uh, on uh, the 1st of uh, May, the Dead Planet crew will be on uh, Gamer Mom Luna's uh, Tales from the Tavern uh, talk show. So looking forward to getting the crew back together and, and you know talk about whatever. So it's kind of the next few them. things on the agenda. So, <laughs> all right. If you haven't yet, real quick, get in there. Exclamation point MHC in the chat. We're going to draw winners here. Hurry up. All right, here is our first winner for tonight. Domokame. Uh oh. Congratulations. All right, one more. Still around. Stage Outlaw is Ooh. Bob still here? Looks like they're in the chat. So. Woo. Congrats. Bob, say hello, and we will get that to you. I'll connect and uh, just need an email for that, and uh, then can send out. Uh, there you are, yeah. So we'll get you a copy of that. Congrats. Thank you for hanging out with us, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us tonight. Again, come and uh, hang out with us next Friday as we conclude this story. I'm sure it'll be quite a tale. So thank you all so very much for being here, and uh, we'll see you next time have a great weekend bye bye bye, bye. sweet dreams